Welcome to VSU Blazer Basketball, Lady Blazer Basketball, here on Saturday at the Complex in Valdosta, Georgia. The Blazers take on the Lady Chargers from Alabama Huntsville, a team 5 and 15 on the season, but 3 and 4 in conference play. The Blazers are on top of the Gulf South Conference East Division, one game ahead of the University of West Florida, who they lost to last Saturday with a 6 and 1 record. Alongside Mindy Copeland, I'm Bryce Zimmerman. Now, Mindy, the Blazers did lose last Saturday. How's it hanging for Coach Hill's team? You're absolutely right, Bryce. They did actually lose their game last Saturday to the Lady Argonauts, but I think this may actually be a blessing in disguise. It lifts the pressure off, and now the Lady Blazers can focus on their last seven conference games. Take it all the way. Go Blazers. All right, let's go over the starting lineup for your Valdosta State Lady Blazer team, coached by Coach Kylie Hill. Point guard, Nicole Jernigan. At your shooting guard position, junior from Dalton, Georgia, Tracy Newton. True freshman at the small forward position is Carly Peterson. Your power forward, Candice Farrell. She's from Hinesville, Georgia. And your local former Viking, Viquette, Courtney Lowndes Parker. High School Center, Courtney Parker. When we get back, we've got the opening tip-off. Stay with us on VSU-TV. Valdosta State University, Georgia's regional partner, in tune with the technological age. State-of-the-art computer labs as well as online learning experiences ensure Valdosta State students earn a high-tech education. From distance learning to on-site instruction, the VSU campus is connected to tomorrow, offering a premier educational experience that can't be matched. Valdosta State University is Georgia's regional partner. Welcome back to VSU TV and the Lady Blazers versus the University of Alabama Huntsville Lady Chargers. We're at the complex in Valdosta, Georgia. The Lady Blazers, as mentioned in the open, 16 and three on this season, six and one in conference play. They lost last week, Saturday, last Saturday, to the University of West Florida. The Argonauts five and two. Ladies retain the all important South Region pole and the tip is up. Tracy Newton handles it, goes up towards the basket with the left hand, now back out to Nicole Jernigan. Swings it over, this is Carly Peterson, a freshman. Peterson walked with it, it'll be a turnover and the University of Alabama Huntsville Lady Chargers will take it. Kelly Barr inbound, this is Abby Fanning. Fanning will run point for the Chargers. Newton defending Fanning, who pulled up the dribble fairly early. This is Luna. Now at the Schlosser, looking inside to Kelly Barr, knocked away by Farrell. Parker came up with it, and now to Jernigan. Ahead to Newt. Jump stop, swings it cross court. Now looking inside, Candace Farrell up and good. What a great play by Candace Farrell. You know, she is a really, really big key to the Lady Blazers. They're always looking for her. She can always go to the net. She's a great player. Fanny now bringing it along for the Lady Chargers. This is Schlosser. Cross court to Kelly Barr. She can shoot from the outside and rebound. Luna, 6'2", is her height. This is Schlosser out front. Luna trying to get it underneath. A shot from outside, doesn't go. Rebound is not picked up. Nobody blocked out. Tracy Newton picks up the Schlosser miss and now ahead to Carly Peterson. 2 nothing, 18-50 into this game. Jernigan, to the far side wing. Pulls up her dribble, needs some help. Now gets it in Peterson. True freshman Carly Peterson finds Tracy Newton around the screen. Inside to Candace Farrell. And an offensive foul on the junior from Hinesville, Georgia. First foul of the day for the Lady Blazers. Still 2 0. Coach Hill's squad on top. Candace Farrell, that's her first. Team foul number one for the Lady Blazers. Fanning bringing it along. No movement so far from the Charger offense. Hillary Luna. Now Schlosser. Back over to Schlosser. This is Fanning with it. Trying to move those baseline screens. The three from Jenna Wisenant is good. Nothing but net. And Alabama Huntsville takes a one point lead with 18.05. Nicole Jernigan finds junior Tracy Newton from Dalton, Georgia. Good ball movement here from the Lady Blazers. Back out top. University of Alabama Huntsville looks to be in a zone. The three ball is no good from Nicole Jernigan. Rebound to Schlosser for the Lady Chargers. She brings it along with her left hand. Now Wisenant inside. 
Lady Chargers can't put it up. Luna fouled on the rebound attempt. First attempt was no good. She got fouled, and she'll go to line and shoot two. Hillary Luna is a sophomore on a very young Charger team. Only one junior and one senior for this Lady Charger squad under Jeff Keller. The first shot from Luna is up and good. She'll get one more. 17-33 remaining here in the first half. We are just underway from the complex. Luna's second shot. Also nothing but net. And it's a 5-2 lead for the Chargers. Jernigan bringing it along for the Lady Blazers. Carly Peterson. Swinging it all the way over to Jernigan on the far side. And she looks cross court. Peterson, once again, long passes here from the Lady Blazers. Now Peterson for three. High arcing shot, doesn't get the bounce to go. Luna comes up with the rebound. She drops the ball, picks it back up. And now Abby Fanning will bring it up court. Just under the 17 minute mark. This is Schlosser with it. Huntsville a three point lead, early going. Now Luna. Luna looks inside the bar, knocked away by Courtney Parker. Jernigan looks for Newton. Pulls up her dribble, back to Jernigan. Peterson all the way around to Candace Farrell on the outside. She's got Hillary Luna one on one. Takes it to the block now, back out Carly Peterson. Tracy Newton for three, it's good. <laughs> All tied up at five, Newton with a big shot early. Tracy Newton's averaging almost 36 minutes and 12 points a game in conference foes. She's got great leadership ability. She's doing a wonderful job. The lead, the, the tie didn't last long as Hillary Luna using an inside presence, seven to five. Now Alabama Huntsville on top. Newton throws it a miscommunication there. Candace Farrell cut one way. Newton threw the other way, but it's knocked out of bound from Huntsville, and Valdosta State will take it. Coming in for the Blazers, number five, Janelle Colazzo. She's a true freshman, and another true freshman hailing from Brunswick, Georgia, Kaylee Thomas, a rebounding machine for Coach Hill. Here's Colazzo. Significant minutes from both these two freshmen in the early going, and it's continued that way through conference play. Jernigan back out, Kaylee Thomas. Foul called. It'll be on Alabama Huntsville, the first foul, first team foul for the Lady Chargers. Foul is coming number 25, Kelly Barr, her first. Foul is on Kelly Barr, a sophomore who's got tremendous upside for Coach Keller. Colazzo. now Jernigan, looking inside to Kaylee Thomas. Looked to be inside for more than three seconds. Blazers might have got away with one there. Peterson, now Colazzo with it. Looking inside, she's got to get rid of the ball. She does to Jernigan. Out top, shot clock had been reset on the turnover, so it's still at 24 seconds. Whistle. A little indecision on what the call was, but it's going to be against the Lady Chargers. Their second team foul. The Blazers will retain possession. The shot clock will be set at 14. Excuse me, that's not a foul. The shot clock was not correct. It'll be put at 14, and now here's Carly Peterson. Amber Daniels in for Courtney Parker. Daniels a senior, and she's a great defensive player. Behind a screen, Colazzo looks inside, oh. knocked away by Luna. Bring it up, this is Wisnant. Looking inside, Kelly Barr. Kelly Barr with some individual ball skills you see there. Throw nearly above the 5-2. Julie Richardson now in at point guard for the Chargers. Here's Schlosser. Lost the handle, got it back. Looks cross court. Richardson for three. And this is a team we've seen already take a lot of threes. Alabama Huntsville now up 10-5. That's exactly right. These Blazers got to keep it, keep their defense on, stay with these players, and keep them outside of the three-point range. There's Colazzo for three. Partially blocked. No, no foul called. Nicole Jernigan goes up with a nice individual move with the right hand. 10-7, Alabama Huntsville on top by three. Here's Kelly Barr. Huntsville really move, pushing the issue and moving it down court quickly. Barr now swinging it over. This is Richardson. Schlosser. Barr trying to post up on Amber Daniels. 
Hillary Luna at the top of the key. Wisenant back to Luna inside. She's got position, goes up. It rolls in, foul on the Lady Blazers. That's their third team foul and a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play for Hillary Luna. Amber Daniels, her first, team foul number three. They're gonna, have to, they're gonna have to stay away from Hillary Luna. She seems like she's gonna be a sure shot for those free throws. Luna with some good touch at the line. 14-11 remaining in the first half of play. Blazers down by five and now six as she completes the three-point play. Coming in for the Chargers, number 44, Dory Wimberly, a 6'2 senior, the only senior on this Huntsville squad. That's been seven out of 13 points for Hillary Luna already in this game. She's definitely been the most effective target so far. Jernigan, or excuse me, Colazzo goes up. No good, a little sh too much on that one. Ball is out of bounds to Alabama Huntsville. And the momentum so far really going Huntsville's way. 13 to seven the score. Blazers down six. Newton now playing the point position for Coach Kylie Hill. Richardson, this is Wizenant. Wimberly setting the screen, she's 6-2. Inside Kelly Barr, looked like a walk-in, that's what the call was, 13-43. Blazers get the possession back, trying to cut this six-point lead. Amber Daniels was right there, though, ready to go up and uh, take the shot. Newton bringing it across half court. Looks to the left side, now back to the right, finds Colazzo with some room. Back out to Newton at the top. Rosa Brew, a junior from Santa Fe Community College in Gainesville, Georgia. Or Gainesville, Florida, excuse me. And there's Tracy Newton going up and under with the penetration move. Good rebound, Kaylee Thomas fouled from behind as she tried to put it up. She'll shoot two from the charity stripe. Coach Kylie Hill and the uh, the media book says that uh, Kaylee Thomas, otherwise known as Special K, is a gifted young woman academically and athletically. She didn't hit that first free throw, though. She'll have a chance to hit another one and knock the lead down to five. Into the game, double zero, wearing the buckshot, Michelle Snow, freshman from Clark Range, Tennessee. Second free throw is too strong. Ball is rebounded by Amber Daniels. Carly Peterson will set it up. Fresh shot clock for the Lady Blazers. Peterson nearly had it knocked away by Richardson. A pesky little defender already. Inside pass looking for Kaylee Thomas. Blazers running all over the place. Thomas shoots from the outside. No good. Did not hit any rim. Foul called on Carly Peterson. An over the back call. Fourth team foul already for the Lady Blazers. Bryce, you know, I think that the Lady Blazers just need to take a take a deep breath, set up, set up fresh, and uh, set their plays up right. Looks like the ball's just bouncing everywhere. They don't know who's gonna end up with the ball next. Run some plays. The ladies do look a little bit muffled. 12-44 remaining, 13-7, Huntsville on top. The ladies trying to bounce back from a loss last Saturday in Pensacola to the West Florida Argonauts. Knocked away and Candace Farrell comes up with it. She slows it down, finds Peterson. Peterson all the way over to Rosa Brew, who's looking for Amber Daniels on the baseline. And she took a monster travel. Wasn't going to get away with that one. 12-23 <laughs> remaining. Amber Daniels should have brought a suitcase. Now a little bit of a press here from Coach Kylie Hill's team, and it results in a turnover. Score still 13-7 for the Chargers. Candace Robinson could not handle that pass. A Brew inbounds it to Peterson. Guarded by Abby Fanny. This is Farrell. Back to Peterson. Inside Candace Farrell made a great cut, went up strong with it, no foul called. Just about at the 12 minute mark. Score still 13 to seven. Here's Snow, Snow with some baseline moves and a soft touch behind. Great play there by Snow. 15 to seven, Huntsville on top. Newton. Needs some help, finds it in Rosa Brew. Back over to Tracy Newton. Newton trying to penetrate the lane, kicks it back out. This is Peterson inside Candace Farrell. 
Goes up, no good. Rebound picked up by Wimberly. Abby Fanning looks ahead, and this is Robinson. Robinson with a two-on-two -two developing. She drives to the lane and rolls off, no good. Ball is off Valdosta State. It will be Lady Charger basketball. Coming in for the Blazers, Courtney Parker and Nicole Jernigan. Coming in for the Lady Chargers, Hillary Luna, Kelly Barr back into the game. And for the first time, we see Moshita Pettis, freshman guard from Murfreesboro. Also a late sub coming in for Carly Peterson. Katie Steffen, a sophomore who saw limited time last year, but she's shown great improvement this season and played a little bit more down the stretch. Fanning being guarded by Tracy Newton, trying to force her to take it to the left side of the court. Here's Pettis inside Kelly Barr, trying to post up on Courtney Parker. Barr just a sophomore, Courtney Parker a senior. Fanning, good ball movement here from the Lady Chargers. Now Kelly Barr, great ball fake. Put the bucket, no good. And now here's Nicole Jernigan. Courtney Parker. Back to Jernigan, trying to set up a play. Lady Blazers have not been able to penetrate the inside portion of the court so far. No easy buckets given up. Jernigan, back out Tracy Newton. Shot clock at seven, inside Katie Steffen. Great pass by Newton. Steffen thought she was fouled. Luna and Steffen tangle up for a jump ball. The possession arrow is in the Lady Chargers' favor. No easy buckets for the Lady Blazers. That's exactly right, but I am happy to see that they're going more towards their rebounds. They're not just leaving, leaving the net up to the Chargers. The ladies of Valdosta State came into this game the top-ranked defense in the nation, 42.9 allowed. Turnover, Kelly Barr throws it cross-court and into the crowd. And with 10 minutes and 13 seconds remaining, it's 15-7. Chargers on top. There's Jernigan. Tracy Newton on the far side. Newton finds Parker, who's bandaged up on her hand, but she hasn't stopped her from scoring in recent games. Turnover again for the Lady Blazers, and the, the Huntsville team wants to run. Here's Robinson up, no good. Luna with the rebound, around three Blazers, and she's fouled. Once again, Hillary Luna getting to the foul line. Foul is called number 34, Courtney Parker. That's Courtney Parker's second for the game. 9.50 remaining in this one. We'll take a quick timeout here on VSU TV. We'll be back with the rest of the first half. Stay with us. We need your help on our journey to a Gulf South Conference championship. A journey is always better shared, believe. As you know, every game counts for the preseason ranked Blazers. Come help us chase another regular season title and trip to the NCAA tournament. There'll be 20 days and nights of basketball action in the complex at VSU. For your tickets, call 333-5890. Back here on VSU TV, Lady Blazers, Lady Chargers. Chargers on top by eight points, a 15 to seven margin, and Luna at the line. Makes the first one she's not missed yet from the free throw stripe. Just under 10 minutes remain. As I said right before the break, this has been Courtney Parker's second foul for the game. So an early foul has Courtney Parker sitting on the bench. And now here's Jernigan bringing it across. 10 point lead for Alabama Huntsville. Leading the top team in the South region. Newton fending off a tenacious Abby Fanning. Now Kaylee Thomas, Katie Steffen with it. Steffen. Jump ball called. It's going to be Blazer ball, but good hustle there by Mashita Pettis to tie up that loose ball. Nine and a half minutes. and a brew in for the game. Nine and a half minutes remaining. Ten point lead for Huntsville. Peterson. Now Colazzo inside kick ball. Wisenot kicked it as she flung her foot out there to try to break up the play. Well done. Shot clock remains at 30, or resets to 30 on a kick ball. To inbound it, Rosa Brew. Now Carly Peterson with it. Rosa Brew shoots, 
from the outside. Try to kiss it off the glass, glass no good. Wizenon falls down, picked up, and Rosa Brew comes up with it. Good hustle there from the Lady Blazers. Great hustle. Peterson, now a brew. Back out to Colazzo. No inside presence. The shot for three. No good from a brew. Trying to rebound that one was Carly Peterson. She's going to be called for a foul. An over the back call. That's the sixth team foul. One more, and the Lady Chargers will be in the double bonus. That's Carly Peterson's second for the game already. And I have to agree with you, Bryce. Those, those Lady Blazers have got to find a way to get inside the paint to get those two point shots because split shots, they add up after a while. Here's Richardson for the Chargers. Now Kelly Barr. Pettis. Looking, finds Wizenot. She's a three-point threat. Pops out. Back out to Pettis. Inside, looking for Kelly Barr up and good. Timeout taken by Coach Kylie Hill. A 19-7 lead to start off this game. 8.34 remaining. Alabama Huntsville looking to be in charge as of now. Tune in to WVVS Valdosta, 90.9 FM Thursdays from 8 to 10 p.m. for Jock Talk Without the Itch. It's the X's and O's show. Join Zim, Cage, and Monty for all the sports rock talk you can handle, your local, regional, and national coverage. It's the X's and O's show every Thursday night from 8 to 10 on V91. You know, Bryce, there's been no VSU field goal in nearly six minutes down here on the Lady Blazer side. Unbelievable. Coach Hill's got to find a way to penetrate the lane. The Lady Chargers are really sinking in and trying to take away the two big guns inside for Valdosta State and Candace Farrell and Courtney Parker, forcing the Blazers to shoot from the outside. And right now, they're missing. That's exactly right. But I think most importantly, like we've been saying the whole time, the Lady Blazers have got to find a way inside the three-point line to get those shots. Ladies coming back onto the floor. 8.34 remaining in this first half of play. Valdosta State down 12 points to a Charger squad that is 5-15 on the season. 3-4 in conference play, though. Inbounding and in will be Peterson to Jernigan. Jernigan wears that brace on her right knee because of an ACL injury suffered last season. She missed most of the season. Happy to be back in the starting lineup. Rosa Brew looking inside. Good pass to Amber Daniels. A cutting Jernigan is missed, but Farrell comes up with it. Foul called on Julie Richardson, a hand check foul. And the Blazers finally get a foul call from these referees. 8-16 remaining. Blazers will inbound it from underneath. New shot clock for Valnasta State. Carly Peterson on the far side wing looks inside Amber Daniels. Back to Peterson, now a brew. Jernigan. Daniels inside, knocked away by Hillary Luna. This is Wizenant. Luna really becoming a force in this game so far. Wizenant finds Richardson. Back over to Pettis. Guarded by Rosa Brew, now Wizenant again with it. Kelly Barr. Up and under. Pettis for three. Trickles it home. 22 to seven. Alabama Huntsville. Jernigan finds Abreu. Abreu back to Jernigan. Trying to get it inside to Amber Daniels. Great defense from Kelly Barr. Here's Abreu with it. Looking for Peterson. Blazers look stagnant. Inside, great push. Got it inside to Candace Farrell, but she could not finish. No foul called, and the hundreds and hundreds of referees inside the building disagreed, but the three on the court did not blow the whistle. Pettis, now to Barr. Barr with the left hand, tried to look for the pass, knocked away by the Lady Blazers. Jernigan lead pass for Carly Peterson. She goes up and loses it. Wisenot looking ahead, lead pass, Kelly Barr wide open. Has it stripped away by Candace Farrell. She gave up an easy two, but it'll still be Charger possession. This will give the Lady Blazers a chance to take a deep breath, reset up, get the ball back, and let's go down and score. 6.44 remaining in the first. 22-7, Chargers up. To inbound the ball will be Candace Robinson, a sophomore from West Memphis, Tennessee. 
A lot of players on this team from Tennessee and Alabama because Huntsville's location close to the Tennessee border. Now Lindsey Schlosser back to Candace Robinson. Knocked away. Dory Wimberly trying to post up. Richardson brings it over. Here's Candace Robinson. Now Schlosser, a threat from outside. Foul called on Alabama Huntsville. Looks like it's going to be on Michelle Snow for elbowing. That's 13 5. It'll be actually on Dory Wimberly, her second. Blazers still haven't hit double digits in scoring, and we're six minutes and 15 seconds away from the end of the first half. Newt with the left hand. Now out to Jernigan, front of the rim, no good. Robinson throws it away, not saved by Richardson. It'll be Blazer ball. Alabama Huntsville is turning the ball over a good bit. The Blazers just are ice cold from around the perimeter and unable to get any easy looks. Jernigan finds Newton. Kristen McLeod in the game for the first time. She's a Valdosta native. Colazzo inside. Foul called on Dory Wimberly, and that is her, her third, third person. That'll bring Hillary Luna back off the bench and into the game. Not something that the Blazers may want to see anyway, because <laughs> Luna has really dominated so far. Blazers to inbound. Jernigan throws it out to Colazzo. Colazzo back inside. This is Amber Daniels who goes up. No foul called. The Blazer fans once again not happy. The jump shot from Finally. Daniels is good, and that's in a scoring drought of a long time. I'm really glad to see the Blazers trying to go inside the paint. They're trying to stay away from the outside and go in for the kill. Richardson. That's the first field goal in eight minutes. Unbelievable. Schlosser. Now to Richardson. This is Robinson. Far side. Inside to Michelle Snow. Buckshot couldn't hold on to that one. And now Tracy Newton bringing it across. Colazzo. Ladies looking to put together a scoring run. Good fake there by Newton to fake the three. Sends it back out. Daniel. Here is Colazzo. Jump stop. Shot is good. Looks like the Blazers have their momentum. This crowd's trying to cheer them on, get that momentum going, keep the blood flowing. Lead cut to 11 and a timeout taken by Alabama Huntsville. We'll be back very shortly with the rest of the four minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the first half right here on VSU TV. To you, this is a place to hang a coat. To someone else, it's a place to teach a child a lesson you'll never forget. Preventing child abuse and neglect doesn't just mean reporting it. It means stopping it before it starts. Find out how at preventchildabuse.org or 1-800-CHILDREN. A child is helpless. You are not. Back on VSU TV, four minutes, 45 seconds left on the clock here in the first half. Abby Fanning bringing it across. 11-point lead, 22-11. to 11. Alabama Huntsville on top of the top team in the South region, Valdosta State. Hillary Luna finds Kelly Barr. These two have been a deadly combo with their height and skill. No travel call. Looked like Barr moved her pivot foot. Now Robinson. Three, two, one. They are not going to be able to get the shot clock. Very happy shot to see clock Kristen violation. McLeod, native Valdosta, and Kristen McLeod staying with her. Hillary Luna, that's what we've got to take to shut her down. She's been the lead scorer in this game so far, and that's what it's going to take. Jernigan bringing it up. Blazers trying to cut the lead down inside single digits. Newton looking for McLeod inside. Foul called on Kristen McLeod as she was jockeying for position. And the referee that looks similar to Mills Lane called that one. Four minutes and four seconds remaining. 22 to 11. Kelly Barr to inbound it for Huntsville. Colazzo applying a little bit of pressure here to Fanny. Not going to make it easy for her to get across the timeline. Here's Fanny. This is Wizenant. Pick set by Luna. Wizenant and she dragged her pivot foot. And now Alabama Huntsville may be feeling a little bit of the pressure of the hometown crowd. 
That's exactly right. That's what I was saying. The Blazers, they finally found their momentum. We've got to keep it going for the next three minutes and 53 seconds of the game, or the first half, I'm sorry. Jernigan. Looking for Colazzo, and she double dribbled on that play. So it's a battle of turnovers right now, and Coach Hill and Coach Keller cannot be pleased with what they've seen out of their teams over the last couple minutes here. Fanny, pressure applied by Nicole Jernigan. Here's Hillary Luna looking for Kelly Barr inside. Knocked away Amber Daniels, a defensive specialist, and she made a great play there. Amber Daniels is such a great player. The girls really depend on her, I think. Definitely on the defensive side of the court. She brings a lot of energy. Inside the McLeod. Back out to Jernigan. Now Colazzo open for three. This is huge, and it counts. What a great play by the Lady Blazers. That's exactly what you call teamwork, and that's what it's going to take to beat the Lady Chargers this time. Lead cut down to eight. 22-14, Blazers now on a seven-point run. Under three minutes remaining. This is Moshita Pettis now to Luna. Luna, up and under, goes up. Charging call, Hillary Luna. Great play there by Amber Daniels. Once again, defense sparking the way for Valdosta State. Into the game Courtney now, Parker Courtney Parker. Courtney Parker in for Kristen McLeod. Two minutes, 48 seconds remaining. 22 to 14, Blazers trying to cut this eight point lead. Even more before halftime. Jernigan. This is Amber with it. Now Newton knocked out of bounds, Abby Fanning. Good defensive play there from the Huntsville point guard. Blazers trying to decide on who's going to inbound this pass. It will be Janelle Colazzo. The true freshman. Now a late sub, Nicole Jernigan comes out for a sharpshooter, and that's Carly Peterson maybe looking for a three here. You know, Bryce, those seven fouls for UAH puts VSU in bonus. They'll be in the one and one bonus on the next defensive foul committed by Alabama Huntsville. Here's Amber Daniels back out. Courtney Parker, that's her shot, just rolled off. Foul called on Valdosta State. They're going to call it on Carly Peterson. No, this is going to be actually, it's on Alabama Huntsville, so the Blazers will shoot a one and one. Foul was called on Jenna Wisenant. Two minutes, 25 seconds remaining, and Carly Peterson to the line for a one and one situation. First shot is good, so she'll shoot another. Lead cut to seven. This one is no good. Great rebound by Amber Daniels. She came flying in to get that one. Now Newton, Newton off her foot. That's a kick ball on VSU. Oh no, a foul called. You know, Kelly that could be Barr. a big play for VSU Lady Blazers. Get that momentum going. Maybe we can close in that gap before the first half is up. So now Newton goes to the line. Two minutes, 19 seconds remaining. Lady Blazers trying to cut this lead once again. Another one and one situation. Back into the game for Valdosta State. Kristen McLeod. Courtney Parker comes out. Second foul on Abby Fanning. First free throw is good. According to this media guide, Coach Callie Hill says Tracy and Winner are synom synonymous. Synom synonymous. I can't say it right. <laughs> Lead cut to six. Newton again knocks that second free throw down, and the lead is five. Valdosta State on a 12-0 run at the moment. Two minutes, 13 seconds remaining. That's 10 straight points for VSU. Wisenant. Pettis looks inside. Luna up and under. Great move by Hillary Luna. Scooped it in. She's really showing her offensive prowess, and that stops the Lady Chargers scoring drought. The lead back at seven. Colazzo looks inside to Krista McLeod. It got there, but McLeod could not corral it in. And it'll be Alabama Huntsville ball. So the possession swing there. Alabama Huntsville scores on the previous possession, and the ladies turn it over. They can't match, and here's Fanning up with it. Now Barr. This is Mashita Pettis. Wisnot. Now Barr for three. 
Off the front iron, no good. Rebound knocked away. Luna had possession, knocked away by McLeod. And here comes Jernigan. Fast-paced game here. Colosso. Jernigan. Tracy Newton with it. Under a minute, 20 remaining. Colosso for three. The second time she's made that beautiful shot. What rotation on that shot from Janelle Colosso. A minute nine, lead cut to four. Fanning holds up with it. Now Wizenon on the far side, guarded by Colosso, the true freshman who's provided a spark here late in the first half. Wizenon got away with the walk. Now Kelly Barr is gonna try to answer. Did not hit it, rebound to Colosso, and she fights to keep it. Newton, under a minute remaining, finds Nicole Jernigan for three. This one's no good. Rebound to Kelly Barr, kicks it back to Fanning. 25 seconds on the shot clock. The Blazers will get one more possession at the very least. Here's Fanning. 24-20, Lady Chargers on top, but the Blazers have come back. They were down 22-7 at one point. Luna. Luna's going to dribble drive, try to penetrate. Pump fakes up and good. That's 13 points for Hillary Luna. Hillary Luna, an outstanding player so far for Coach Keller in this first half. 26-20, Chargers on top. Jernigan drives, goes in, jumps, stop, has it knocked away. 3-2, she'll shoot a three at the buzzer. Air ball, no good. That's it for the first half as Amber Daniels goes flying into the corner. But the Lady Blazers come back. They were down 22-7 at one point. We'll be back with the second half. Lady Blazers down by six, 26-20. Stay with us on VSU-TV. At our high school here in Seattle, Rotary Club supports a program called Computers for the World. We rebuild all their computers and then personally take them to places where people can't afford them. Computers for the World is one of many Rotary programs that rely upon volunteers of all ages from the community. It's my way of making a positive impact on the lives of others. It's a great example of the power of volunteerism. You should volunteer. The world is counting on you. It's springtime in the forest of the black-tailed deer. The young male is feeling playful. It's time for tag. The female flicks her ears. Her way of saying, catch me if you can. Waters of America flow through many lands. Anywhere along the journey, polluted runoff can flow into the water. We can protect our waters by planting conservation trees in the country and in our towns. Go to the Arbor Day Foundation website, arborday.org. See how to plant the right trees in the right place. Plant a tree today for all the world to share. To protect your land and the waters of America. Welcome back to the complex here on VSU TV. Glad to have you with us. Blazers down 26 to 20, but Valdosta State was down 22 to 7 at one point. Went on a 13 to 4 run in the final six minutes and 15 seconds to take only a six point deficit at the half. And a big factor why? Janelle Colazzo scoring eight points and uh, two big threes late in the game to increase the, the distance between the two Blazers scores. She's usually averaging 5.7 points per game, but she's already scored eight in the first half. Just a freshman, Janelle Colazzo, a sweet stroke from the outside and really did give Coach Hill and his team a big boost. And there you see Hill trying to pump up his players. They did have the momentum going into the second half. And now we'll see how Alabama Huntsville comes out and fares. In the end down the ball is Jenna Wisenant. Hillary Luna in that first half of play, 13 points. She only averages 9.7, so outstanding there from Luna. Blazers well, got to find a way to shut her down. I know Krista McLeod was hanging with her and uh, shot off some points there, so that's what the Blazers are going to have to do. They're going to have to stick with her. They're going to have to shut her down. Schlosser. Now Wizenot. Jumps and pass to Kelly Barr, and it foul called on Candace Farrell. So 15 seconds in, the Blazers get called for their first foul of the half. That's Candace Farrell's second for the game. Was not looking to inbound. It could be close to a five-second. Ball is knocked away by Courtney Parker. 
Good defense there from the Lady Blazers. Jernigan up to Peterson. Peterson for three. Air ball. Courtney Parker saves it. Now Tracy Newton. You know, Courtney Parker jumping up. She usually doesn't have a lot of height, but that really helped out. She's six foot. Six foot, not the greatest jumping ability from Courtney Parker, but she does seem to get a good amount of rebounds each game. Newton inside Candace Farrell with four on the shot clock is good. Excellent teamwork by the Lady Blazers. That's what it's going to take to beat these Chargers tonight, absolutely. Lead cut to four, 19 minutes remaining in this one. Wizenant guarded by Jernigan. Now Newton. This is Kelly Barr. Hasn't really scored a whole lot. She's been one of their top scorers this season. This is Schlosser driving, now kicking out wide open. Wizenant for three, way off. This one's picked up and thrown to Jernigan. Jernigan on the far side, now back out. Tracy Newton faked from way out. Peterson. Jernigan trying to drive, pulls up, shot no good, rebound to Kelly Barr. Huntsville bringing it up. Barr to Schlosser, she'll pull up the three, rims out. Both teams trading missed buckets, and Jernigan bringing it across the timeline. 18-13 remaining. Blazers down four. Farrell takes it baseline strong, has it knocked away. Ball was off Alabama, Huntsville. Not quite sure if there's a foul called. Coming back in for Huntsville for the first time this half in for Kelly Barr is Michelle Snow. Six foot freshman. Scores 26-22, Chargers up by four. Newton, Fanning bringing it along. Wizenant on your near side. Looks inside, Hillary Luna, and she traveled. Luna bobbing around with her pivot foot, ducking back and forth, trying to get open on Courtney Parker. Ended up bringing her suitcase because she was traveling. Jernigan. Now Tracy Newton back to Jernigan. Coach Hill's squad trying to set up their offense. Newton pulls up the jump shot, an illegal screen called against Valdosta State. Their second team foul, third on Candace Farrell. 17 minutes, 32 seconds remaining. Blazers down by four. Slow start once again. It was a very slow start for the Lady Blazers in the first half, and they've come out a little bit flat, and now Colazzo is going to check in at the next whistle for Valdosta State. Luna at the top of the key. Now to Wizenant, looking inside to Michelle Snow, knocked away by Amber Daniels. Amber Daniels is just having a fantastic defensive day. Absolutely. Well, like I said, Amber Daniels is such an all-around player, very aggressive on defense, key player for the Blazers. They're always looking for her inside. Jernigan with the steal. She was fouled after she took possession of the ball. That's the first team foul of the day in the second half for Alabama Huntsville. That foul was on Abby Fanning. That was her third. Third foul for the starting point guard of the Lady Chargers. Back into the game, Kelly Barr. Michelle Snow wasn't in the game very long for Coach Keller. Colazzo looked like she was fouled on that. No whistle. Jernigan on the far side. Now to Newton. Back to Colazzo. True freshman Janelle Colazzo looks inside. Newton went up. No travel. Puts Tracy the biscuit Newton. in the basket. What a great player. Now Fanning bringing it. Fanning. Looks for Wizenant. Blazers cut the lead to two now. 26-24, 16-32 remaining. Barr outside, tipped, and Fanning came up with it. Wizenant from way outside, front rim no good. Rebound to Amber Daniel. She was bumped by Schlosser. Things getting a little bit physical between these two teams. And Jernigan. Now to Newt. Setting up the play. Guarded by Schlosser. This is Jernigan with it again. Colazzo, good ball fake. Back to Jernigan, Blazers trying to get a look inside. Six seconds on the shot clock. Jernigan driving baseline, puts it up and in. Nicole Jernigan. The score is tied, Bryce, 26 to 26. And 
And this crowd is on their feet. They're screaming and clapping and cheering on the Lady Blazers. Finally, it's a tie ball game. Well, the Blazers have not tied so far. They were up 2-0 to start the game. Then went down 3-2, and this is the first time they've been able to scratch and claw to get even. Coach Hill's squad, with a little bit more of the momentum as we speak, started this first half off with a 6-2 run. Join Coach Kylie Hill for the Welcome to Moe's Kylie Hill Show Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Get the inside look at Lady Blazer basketball as only the coach himself can deliver. That's the Kylie Hill Show, 8 p.m. every Wednesday night at Moe's Southwestern Grill. The pep band trying to pep up the crowd, but they haven't had much need to because the Lady Blazers really have fought back in this one after being down a lot early. That's exactly right, and this crowd is getting very aggressive, really. They're getting on their feet, they're cheering, yelling. It's great to see such team spirit in the stands. It's gotta be, it's gotta be a great confidence booster for the Lady Blazers during a time whenever you're behind for your fans to be cheering you on still, not ever giving up. It will be Alabama Huntsville possession. They'll take it just inside half court. Lady Blazers come out on defense. Huntsville called that timeout because the Lady Blazers had drawn even on a great play. Here's Julie Richardson. Now to Luna. Scoreless so far in the second half. Richardson. Back to Pettis. Knocked away. Courtney Parker, the ball will be retained by Alabama Huntsville with 14 seconds left on the shot clock. Schlosser to inbound. Kelly Barr, a little no-look pass there. Now to Pettis. This is Luna. Pettis looking inside. Foul called on Amber Daniels as he, she went, got a little bit too physical with Kelly Barr. 15-25 remaining here. Third team foul for Valdosta State. That's Amber Daniels, second. Pettis. Outside Richardson, she's going to call the play. Fresh shot clock for Alabama Huntsville. Pettis. Back to Schlosser. Kelly Barr on the outside. Looking inside, knocked away once again. Defensive specialist Amber Daniels. I'm glad to see the Lady Blazers staying on these Chargers, not giving up, staying on them with defense. They're not going to make this shot any more easy. Very hard to gain an inch if you're a Lady Charger right now. They've had tr trouble scoring going back six minutes in remaining in the first half. Knocked away, Colazzo. She goes after it, but Pettis retains possession, throws it up with one second off the backboard. No good. Rebound kicks out to Nicole, Nicole Jernigan looking for Colazzo cross court. Can't give it to her. Slows it down for Coach Hill. Looking to take the lead on this possession since the first time the Blazers scored in this game. It was 2-0. Colazzo. Parker. She'll jump. Shot from the outside. Three-point no good. Looks inside. Great look there. Nicole Jernigan goes up with it. She'll go to the line as she's found by Julie Richardson with 14-28. Nicole Jernigan goes to the line for two. That's Julie Richardson's second foul for the game. Nicole Jernigan to the line for the Lady Blazers. She'll shoot two shots. Jernigan's first trip to the foul line tonight. First one is up and good. Second one is off the front iron, no good. Rebound is knocked out of bounds. It'll go Alabama Huntsville's way. But the Blazers take a one point lead. Coach Hill this is arguing first, his point. This is the first lead for VSU since early in the game. Very early, I think it was 2-0. Rashida Pettis now gets it to Schlosser. It's Julie Richardson. Schlosser guarded by Jernigan. Hillary Luna yet to score in the second half. 14 to 9 remaining here. Shot clock to 10. Schlosser pulls up from the corner. Wow, what a shot. Lindsay Schlosser pulled up with the right hand on the far side baseline and just knocked a tough shot home. Jernigan 
That's the first field goal for UAH, UAH in six minutes, Bryce. And it puts them back on top by one. 28-27, looking cross court, wide open. Courtney Parker, and it's good. Great rotation. She finished through. Money in the bank, 29-28. Valdosta State reclaims the lead. Richardson, guarded by Colazzo. Now Lindsay Schlosser, who just made a tough shot on the other end. Looks across to Luna. She saves it. The ball is... Retained by Alabama Huntsville with seven seconds on the shot clock. Bar to shoot for three. Wow. In the face of Amber Daniels and a two-point lead for Alabama Huntsville. Kelly Barr. 31-29, Chargers up. Jernigan. Now to Peterson to Colazzo on top. Courtney Parker, pump fake. Loses the ball. She's trying to dribble with that broken finger. And Alabama Huntsville retains it. Now Richardson. 12 minutes, 41 seconds remaining here in the first half. Alabama Huntsville on top by two. Richardson for three. Front iron no good. Rebound knocked away. It's going blazer ball. And Valdosta State with a good defensive stop there. And coming for Valdosta State, Kristen McLeod and junior guard Tracy Newton enter the game. This half is moving quite fast, Bryce. They haven't had to stop the clock very much. It's been going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Their biggest problem has been turnovers for both sides. Peterson. The Colazzo miscommunication there by Valdosta State. Coach Hill not happy with that. And Valdosta State gives away a possession. 12 minutes, 24 seconds remaining. 29-31, Valdosta down by two to the Chargers. Abby Fanning bringing it along. Schlosser. Newton guarding her. Goes around a pick by Wimberly. Shot is partially blocked by Tracy Newton. 12 minutes to go. Colazzo bringing it along. Twenty seconds on the shot clock. Valdosta State trying to set something up. Candace Farrell inside. Wimberly on her kicks it back out. Colazzo couldn't hold on to it. Now Candace Farrell going baseline spins inside. Krista McLeod up and good. There's Krista. that teamwork, Bryce, that we're talking about. The Lady Blazers have got to stick to if they're going to beat these Lady Chargers tonight. It's a tie game again, 31-31, and Krista McLeod is at the foul line. McLeod not used very often throughout the season, but she's got significant minutes here. And she can put the Blazers on top, but she misses the free throw. The game is still locked at 20, or excuse me, 31 with 11.40 remaining. Bar to Fanning. All day they've been trying to force Fanning to go to the left side. Foul called on Janelle Colazzo, blocking foul. It'll be the fourth team foul for Valdosta State. Number five, Oshita Pettis number four. all the way across now to Barr. Barr. Back out to Pettis. She couldn't hold on to it. Now Fanny. Schlosser. Inside Kelly Barr. Foul called on Candace Farrell. Foul score number 15, Candace Farrell. That's her fourth. Fourth Team foul on Candace Farrell. That could be huge down the stretch. Kaylee Thomas checking in. Farrell, one of the main scoring options for Valdosta State down low, and they've had trouble all night long trying to put the ball in the bucket from the paint. 11 minutes, 20 seconds remaining. Wimberly, that's a jump ball. Great hustle by Tracy Newton, and it's going Valdosta State's way. She is such an aggressive player. Great defensive effort there by Newton to get the ball back for Valdosta State. Newton running point, Schlosser guarding her. Thomas at the top of the key, tried to sneak a pass to her. Was knocked away, and Kristen McLeod now at the top. Now to Abreu. Newton to Colazzo, back to Newton. Cross, eight seconds left on the shot clock. Rosa Brew trying to go baseline. She's fouled. Subs coming in for Alabama Huntsville. Hillary Luna back on. And now Candace Robinson for the first time in the second half. Coming back in for the Lady Blazers, senior defensive specialist Amber Daniels. Krista McLeod goes out. 
She's the one that tied this game for Valdosta State. Couldn't hit the free throw to put him ahead. Newton inside. Kent, or excuse me, that's Amber Daniels misses short with the shot. Foul called on Kaylee Thomas. Incidental contact, but still going to be a foul. Sixth team foul for Valdosta State. One thing I see, Bryce, that the Lady Bludgers need to work on is getting up under the net to get their rebounds. I think that that's one thing that we're missing. Fanning. Over to Robinson. Luna being guarded by Thomas gives a little bit of help. Now Luna out top. This is Pettis. Pettis to Kelly Barr. Barr back to Pettis. Using her forearm to drive up and under. Rosa Brew foul called. It's going to be on Kaylee Thomas. Her second in as many minutes, 10-25 remaining here in the first half. We've been deadlocked at 31 for the last two to three minutes here at the complex. Seven fouls for the Lady Blazers versus the four in this half for the Chargers. That means a one and one situation for Moshita Pettis. First free throw is no good. Rebound by Courtney Parker. Now to Jernigan. Some confusion on the offense so far. Jernigan trying to find somebody. Finds Newton out top. Nobody being able to get position. Foul called. Obvious foul. It'll be the fifth team foul for UAH. 10 minutes, seven seconds remaining. Rosa Brew into Jernigan, guarded by Fanning. Ball nearly thrown out. Abru picks it up back to Jernigan. Jernigan to Courtney Parker. Nobody in the middle for Valdosta State. Everything's on the perimeter. Jernigan with a great floating shot, Nicole Jernigan. Breaks the tie, it's now 33-31, our Lady Blazers. Jernigan knocked down by Fanning, no foul called. Valdosta State, as Mindy mentioned, up by two with nine and a half minutes remaining. Kelly Barr underneath, no room to work with. Now Robinson, great spin move with the right hand, no good, a little bit too strong on that one. A foul called on Kelly Barr. That's her fourth. Fourth personal foul for Kelly Barr. It'll be a, oh no, the foul's gonna be on Valdosta State. And that the crowd, crowd is, not happy about that. is very irate here at the complex, but it's gonna be a timeout. And we are also gonna take a timeout with 9.19 remaining Valdosta State on top, 33-31, but an unhappy complex. Stay with us. Okay, ready? One zip, my point. Two zip, my point. Yes. Three zip. There is a better way to have fun with history. Visit americaslibrary.gov. Log on, play around, learn something. Five zip, your serve. Back here on VSU TV, Kelly Barr set to shoot her first of a one and one situation. Barr, just a sophomore, but she's proven to be a very good addition to this Alabama Huntsville team, and her first free throw is good. Cuts the lead in half. It's now a one point deficit for the Lady Chargers. And Barr, she can hear this crowd whenever she gets ready to shoot. They go absolutely crazy, hitting the bleachers, yelling but it doesn't seem to distract her at all. Knocked both down, and now we're tied again, this time at 33. Jernigan to bring it up. Newton, driving, spin move, jump shot. Count it. Once again, Coach Hill, Tracy Newton, and winner, they're synonymous. I can't say that word right, Bryce. Synonymous. Synonymous, I can't say it. <laughs> Blazers up two, 35-33. Just under nine minutes left here at the complex in Valdosta, Georgia. This is a Gulf South Conference matchup. Blazers on top of the conference with a six and one record. Three and four from Alabama Huntsville, but they didn't 
Looked like a three and four team in conference today. Pettis driving the lane with the right hand off the glass. No good as the shot clock expired. Now Jernigan. Newton. Outside, Carly Peterson, whose shot has not been on today. Parker has to dribble a little bit, gets it to Peterson, knocked nearly out of bounds. Jernigan back to Peterson for three. This one is another air ball, second of the day. Shot clock at 11. Peterson just hasn't been able to click so far today. Jernigan the shot, back iron no good. Rebound goes out of bounds to Valdosta State. Good hustle there from the Lady Blazers underneath the basket. I've really got to commend Tracy Newton. She's just been everywhere the ball has gone. It's like she's a magnet. She's drawn to it. And it seems like her teammates pick up on that and they try to find her and she's done a really, really nice hustle for the game today. Jernigan finds Newton. Inside Amber Daniels. Foul called. They're gonna count the basket, I believe. Basket does count. Valdosta State will take a four point lead and Amber Daniels has a chance to make it five as she'll go to the line for one. Foul is the first on Lindsay Schlosser. Just under eight minutes remaining here in the second and final half, hopefully. Shot is no good. Foul called on Courtney Parker. She just laughs about that one because she didn't quite believe it was true. It's a one and one situation, so. Doesn't Parker's, look like Coach Hill's happy about that one either. Parker's third foul will result in Kelly Barr going to the line for a one and one. Still eight minutes left, 16 fouls for UAH, nine for Coach Hill's squad. First one is good, she hasn't missed a free throw yet here in the second half. Barr is listed as a guard but plays more like a forward, averaging close to seven and a half rebounds a game. Second free throw is good from Kelly Barr. And that brings UAH back within two. 37-35, a low scoring affair. Jernigan. Dribbles into a little bit of trouble. Hold called on Julie Richardson. That'll be the seventh team foul. And that will send Nicole Jernigan to the line for one and one. So we're already into the free throws here with 7.47 left to go in this game. That's Richardson's second foul. Richardson, a backup point guard. She's a freshman. Maybe made a freshman mistake there in a close game. Jernigan has the opportunity to shoot two if she makes this first one. It is good. Caressing the nylon for a point. 38-35, looking to make it 39. Second free throw is also through the hoop. Timeout and a timeout Blazers. taken. One Blazers. point I think we should mention, Bryce, Tracy Newton is the first Blazer to have double digits this game. She scored 11 points for us so far. 39-35, Blazers on top, 7.47 remaining in the last half of play. Come to the Mellow Mushroom every Tuesday at 6 p.m. in Remerton for the Jim Yarbrough Show. Feel the excitement of Blazer Hoops as brought to you by Coach Yarbrough. It's pizza, it's fun, it's the Jim Yarbrough Show. Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. at Mellow Mushroom. One thing Coach Callie Hill has said about Nicole Jernigan, she's like the Energizer Bunny. She just keeps going and going and going, and that's been true for this game as well. You can definitely see that Nicole Jernigan, really a jitterbug out there. A very important part of this ball club. She can score, she can penetrate the lane and dish out the pass to get her teammates involved in scoring. And really she's got a good attitude out on the floor. And that's true about all the Lady Blazers. They exactly. all are very, very committed, not only to this program, to this school, and winning, and winning for this crowd. That's exactly right. They're all, every single one of them, upstanding ladies on and off the court. And I think that's very important. Coach Keller and UAH hoping that the Lady Blazers will be a little bit less outstanding on the court. <laughs> the Blazer faithful and the Blazer nation here disagree. Kelly Barta inbound. This one's to Abby Fanny. Defense, 
Fanning trying to call a play. 22 seconds already on the shot clock. They find Luna underneath, but the throw was bad, and she throws it out of bounds. So far, Hillary Luna is scoreless in this half of the ball game. Can you believe that? After all the score, all, all, all the points she scored in the first half, she scored half, more than half, of the Lady Chargers' points in that first half of play, and zero here. And it really, you can see it on the scoreboard. Blazers up by four with a chance to do more damage. Amber Daniels goes up off the glass. What an aggressive good. player, Amber Daniels. Fanning. Her team now down by six. Kelly Barr, deed up by Amber Daniels, and she's done an outstanding job. This one's knocked away, and it, Tracy Newton comes up with it. What a motivator. Amber Daniels has been, Jernigan tried to sneak that pass into Candace Farrell. Candace Farrell playing with four fouls, one more, and she's out of the game. Fanning, Jernigan, trying to force Fanning to go to the left side. Now Wisenant. Great steal, Carly Peterson takes it away. The momentum clearly swinging Blazer way right now. 6.34 remaining, 41.35. Valdosta State on top. Newton. And the crowd is loving it. Carly Peterson. Back to Newton at the top. Now Jernigan. Jernigan sneaks one in. Candace Farrell goes up. Fouled and good. And the ball just hung on the rim for an eternity before it decided to give in to gravity and drop through the net. Farrell will shoot one more at the line. Last season, she led in team scoring and rebounding despite averaging only 26 minutes a game because of foul trouble. She's in foul trouble tonight, but Blazer Faithful may forgive her if she hits this shot. <laughs> it would put the Blazers up by nine. Complex gets quiet. Farrell rolls it home. 44-35, our Lady Blazers on top. 6-14 remaining. Fanny Schlosser looking inside, now drives. Back out, Kelly Barr, she'll pull up the jump shot, no good. A little short on that one, Carly Peterson comes up with it, and Alabama Huntsville has gone cold. This is a team that shot 52.9% in that first half of play. They may have shot themselves out of this game. Here's Newton, up by nine, Blazers. Newton with the floater, no good, no friendly bounce, but Newton fights for the rebound. Inside, great pass, great look by Amber Daniels. She saw Candace Merrill hiding out underneath the basket. Blazers now up by 11. This momentum is incredible. Exactly what these Lady Blazers have needed. Exactly. We're up 46-35. And this crowd is, is eating it up. They're on their feet. They're cheering. Blazers up 46-35 with five minutes and 40 seconds remaining. We'll take a break on VSU TV and bring you the rest of the second half. Noise. There's more of it in your life than you think. Everyday sounds from household appliances to traffic. Even a crowded restaurant can hit 85 decibels. That's the level audiologists know can cause permanent hearing loss. So keep an eye on your ears and visit ASHA.org, the American Speech Language Hearing Association. Back here on VSU TV, Blazers on top with an 11 point lead. They were down by six going into this half. Now have an 11 point cushion with five minutes and 40 seconds remaining. Candace Farrell to the line and she's got a chance to make it a 12 point lead. She's in foul trouble, but I gotta tell you, Brad, she's absolutely redeeming herself these last few minutes. Free throw is no good, back iron. Guess Tracy who comes Newton. up with the rebound? The junior from Dalton, Georgia, whose battery never seems to die. Peterson, now Jernigan. Back to Carly Peterson, true freshman, inside Amber Daniels. She's been outstanding tonight. Newton, now to Jernigan. Jernigan back to Tracy Newton, shot clock at five. Candace Farrell, offensive foul on Candace Farrell. And that will be her fifth. That will be her fifth. Well, Candace Farrell leaves this game with five minutes and 12 seconds remaining. Lady Blazers sure could use her athleticism down the stretch. 
Valdosta State will take a quick timeout. And it looks like Courtney Parker will be coming in. But you look at this Valdosta State Lady Blazer team, and you see who's contributed tonight. Over the last couple days, last couple games for Valdosta State's and Coach Hill's squad, it's been Carly Peterson. Mm -hmm. She's had great games. But then last week, even in the loss to West Florida, Tracy Newton with 14. She's the top scorer tonight for the Blazers. And Nicole Jernigan with 10. She's been a spark plug all night. Candace Farrell's got the potential to score any day. Courtney Parker can shoot from the outside. Kaylee Thomas comes off the bench and gets rebound. This team is a living, breathing unit. They are so good and so deadly. How do you defend something like that? And then they have the nation's best defense. Exactly. Well, Bryce, I mean, part of being a great team is knowing your team. Even with your eyes closed, you know where they are. You can almost feel that they're there, acting like, as you said, a unit. And that's exactly what the Lady Blazers are. Abby Fanning. Kelly Barr, guarded by Amber Daniels. Foul called, or there's a foul called. It looked like she walked before the foul. Lady Blazers, Coach Hill furious on the sideline. The fans are with him. Kelly Barr walked with that ball, and then the far side referee called a foul. Coach Hill absolutely fuming. Two shots for Kelly Barr as now Valdosta State has 10 fouls, which puts Alabama Huntsville in the double bonus. Under five minutes, Kelly Barr, her first free throw is good. I don't think she's hit the rim on any of her free <laughs> I throws. I don't think so either. Nothing but net all the way. Score 46-36, Blazers up by 10. Barr trying to knock that one down. And she does to cut it to nine, a three possession ball game. Into the game, Candace Robinson in for Moshita Pettis. And it looks like Alabama Huntsville is gonna put on a full court press here. Try to force a turnover. Peterson, this one's knocked out of bounds by Fanning. No damage done there. Keller, Coach Keller for Alabama Huntsville. Trying to force Valdosta State into a turnover. Maybe some quick points for his offense. They go for the home run Amber ball. Daniels. They find Amber Daniels. Daniels is fouled. And they call a charge on Daniels. Kelly Barr got positioned underneath the basket. Amber Daniels bumped her out of the way. And she gets called for the foul. The crowd is not happy about that. It's her fourth foul. I don't know if the Blazers can stand or afford to lose Amber Daniels, and the Blazer faithful are not happy with these referees. Fanny bringing it up. Now around the right side. Over to Candace Robinson. Robinson goes up with the right hand off the glass, too strong. Peterson comes away with it. Four and a half minutes remaining. Blazers up by nine. We're in a barn burner here at the complex in Valdosta, Georgia. Jernigan. It's still a tight ball game, only 46-37 with four minutes and 20 seconds left. Newton dribbles herself into a corner, finds Peterson, kicks it back out. Nicole Jernigan, now Amber Daniels. Shot clock at five. Newton driving the far side baseline. She had the ball stripped away from her. No foul called. Coach Hill wants it again. Tracy Newton can't believe it. With four minutes and eight seconds, two seconds on the shot clock for Valdosta State. Kaylee Thomas will check into the game. And now Moshita Peters into the game for Huntsville. Timeout called by Valdosta State. So with four minutes and eight seconds remaining, Blazers up by nine. Two seconds on the shot clock. This could be a crucial possession in the game. We can't lose Amber Daniels, though. She's in foul trouble. She's got four fouls on her, but there's still four minutes left in the game. Scores only 46-37. It can go either way, Bryce. Tune in to Cable Channel 11 for News 11 in focus Thursdays at 3 and 10 p.m. for the latest national, state, and local news. That's News 11 on BSU TV Thursdays at 3, live at 3, and then a rebroadcast at 10 p.m. on VSU TV. We'll see what Coach Hill and his coaching staff have concocted for this play. Shot goes outside, Tracy Newton dribbles, puts up a long three, shot clock violation, could not get it to the rim. Tough play, good defense there from Alabama Huntsville. Abby Fanning using her forearm to just bowl over Nicole Jernigan and finally the Lady Blazers get a call. Abby Fanning looked like a, a ramrod flying down. It's that her is fourth. her her fourth foul, so both teams have a few players in foul trouble. Jernigan still wincing a little bit from that one. She hit the hardwood hard 
on that play. Under four minutes remaining. Nine point Valdosta State lead. Here's Newton. Now Carly Peterson looks underneath. Nicole Jernigan, great pass by Peterson, puts it up and in and the foul. I mean, Jernigan just seems to be everywhere the ball goes. I mean, all those guards around her completely on top of her, but yet she still finds the ball. Nicole Jernigan out heighted, out weighted in the wrong position of the court for her. She's a point guard. She finds herself underneath the basket, puts it up and in with the right hand, gets fouled on the play, has a chance to put Valdosta State up by 12. That's earning her the name, the Energizer Bunny, from Coach Kylie Hill. And again, she makes the shot. Made it look easy, and now it's a 12-point lead. 49-37, three and a half minutes remaining. Julie Richardson bringing it along. Schlosser, jump stop, pulls up with the jump shot, no good. Rebound by Kelly Barr, foul called on Kaylee Thomas. That is, I believe, her third personal foul. And it'll be double bonus. Both teams in the double bonus now. Kelly Barr, once again, will shoot free throws. It seems like all of her shots this game have been free throws, at least the ones that have gone in. Barr, once again, knocks it down with ease. Amber Daniels checking back into the game with four fouls. Coach Hill will try to utilize her defensive skills as long as she can stay out of foul trouble the rest of the way. Three minutes and 22 seconds. Barr, second attempt. Once again, good. Lead cut to 10. 10 fouls each on both sides for the second half. Full court press once again for the Lady Chargers, trying to force Valdosta State into a turnover. Courtney Parker comes up with this one. Bounce pass over to Crowd Carly Peterson. Crowd was not happy about that. Now Newton. Newton dribbles it down the near side. Swings it across. Carly Peterson. Now Courtney Parker. The shot is good. She restores the 12-point lead, and Parker left her hand up there to show Oh, some of the Alabama Huntsville players that that shot had gone in maybe if they didn't see. Two, under three minutes remaining, Hillary Luna, who's been quiet in the second half, nearly threw that one away. Back to Luna, guarded by Parker. Luna, up and good. Her first points of the second half, and they come at the 2.43 mark. Scores 51-41, Blazers up by 10. Parker back to Newton. Newton trying to bring it up. The Chargers still keeping up with that four court press, but the Blazers seem every time to beat it. That's a wonderful thing. Once again, Courtney Parker feeling it, but this one's front rim no good. Kelly Barr bringing it up quickly for Alabama Huntsville behind the back now to Julie Richardson. Richardson to Candace Robinson. She'll shoot a long rainbow three, no good. Partially blocked on that one. Looking ahead, Amber Daniels. She'll slow it down and try to waste some time here. Peterson now to Jernigan. Just about two minutes left in this one. Valdosta State trying to pull out their seventh conference win of the season. The issue is outscored UAH 31 to 15 in the second half. Newton on your near side wing. Swings it over to Nicole Jernigan. Jernigan with three seconds on the shot clock. Folks it up and in. The Energizer Bunny strikes again, making it 53-41. VSU on top. Nicole Jernigan, just unbelievable. She's so so deadly with that little floater. Puts a lot of arc on it, a tough shot to block. Blazers up 53-41 with 144 remaining. We'll come back with a final minute 44 on VSU TV. You don't want to go anywhere. I am the port in the storm. United States Coast Guard. Heed your country's call. Join the Coast Guard or Coast Guard Reserve. Welcome back to the complex. One minute, 44 seconds remaining. Valdosta State on top, 53-41. It wasn't always that way. In the first half, they were down by 22 to a seven mark. Fought back a 13-4 run at the half and now have a 12-point lead. Great defense stolen away, knocked away, but rebounded. And, oh. 
A loose ball. Whose ball is it? Foul called on Wisenant with a minute 30 remaining. That means Carly Peterson will go to the line. That ball was going everywhere like a bouncy ball. Absolutely. Tracy Newton hit the floor, got right back up. These Lady Blazers are hustling. They're not going to make this last minute, minute and 29, any easy for these Chargers. Looking to extend the lead already at 12 points. Carly Peterson to the line. She'll shoot two shots. First one is off the front rim, no good. Carly Peterson, usually a great shooter, and so far the Blazers fortunately haven't had to use her all that much tonight, but she, her shot has not been on all day long. The second free throw is good. Both teams are now shooting a double bonus. Under a minute and a half. Blazers counting down. This one's knocked off Alabama Huntsville's Lindsey Schlosser, and it'll be Valdosta State Lady Blazer ball. Peterson to inbound. Blazers up by 13. Kelly Barr comes out of the game, and it looks like maybe Coach Keller may have conceded this one as Barr and Luna are all on the bench. Schlosser guarding Newton now over to Courtney Parker. Nicole Jernigan. Stolen away by Wisnott, but taken back. Wisnott had it. She stepped out of bounds or was out of bounds when she had possession of the ball with a minute 05 Valdosta State. We'll get the ball back. These Lady Blazers aren't going to go down without a fight. I'm telling you that, Bryce. Both teams fighting to the very end. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to do much good for Alabama Huntsville. Newton. Very fiery, feisty play there from both Newton and Wisnott. Newton, under, she'll under take the left. three, no good. Now Courtney Parker, no shot. Foul called on double zero, buck shot, Michelle Snow. Snow's first foul of the day, and it comes with one less than a minute remaining. Courtney Parker to the line. Courtney Parker to the line for the Lady Blazers. Looks like Coach Hill and the Valdosta State Lady Blazers are gonna wrap this one up. You see some celebrating fans. <laughs> Shot is good from the charity strike. 55-41, Lady Blazers up. Courtney Parker's second attempt is also good. Giving the Valdosta State Blazers a 14 point, 15 point lead. Wisnott, now Richardson back to Wisnott. Richardson again, killing some time are the Lady Blazers. Just about 40 seconds remaining here. Schlosser. With the right hand, goes up and under. Wisenant high off the glass and good. Good play there by Alabama Huntsville. He cuts the lead to 12. Peterson now back to Parker. They can basically run out the clock. About a three second shot clock difference, but it's stolen away. Michelle Snow inside, fouled and good. They called a foul on Tracy Newton. She couldn't believe it, neither can Coach Hill. Michelle Snow put that one home and she'll go to the line for one more shot with 25 ticks remaining. Scores 56-45, Blazers on top. First foul of the day for Tracy Newton. Free throw is no good, rebounded by Farrell. Foul called on Alabama Huntsville. I don't think it was intentional, but that will send Amber Daniels to the line. And only Three. .5 seconds <laughs> taken off the clock. It's <laughs> her second. You know, Bryce, that says something really great about Tracy Newton, with this being her first foul of the game, considering she's been in the game pretty much the whole entire game. She's played a lot of minutes, as she does averaging over 31 minutes a game from Tracy Newton. Invaluable to this Lady Blazer squad. Free throw is good from Amber Daniels. Makes it 12-point margin for Valdosta State, 57-45. Daniel's second attempt is off the back iron, no good. Snow comes up with the rebound, sends it out to Wisenant. Under 20 seconds remaining, knocked away. Amber Daniels playing with four fouls, up by 12, still hustling on defense. That's the pride this team takes in their defensive play. Since six minutes and 15 seconds in the first half, VSU has outscored UAH 50 to 23, Bryce. Wow. Unbelievable turnaround. Michelle Snow showing a little touch and puts that one home. She's got four points in the last couple minutes. Courtney Parker trying to inbound it, finds Nicole Jernigan back to Parker. They can basically run out the clock here. Under 10 seconds left. Jernigan, foul called. Julie Richardson 
A late foul called with 7.6 remaining. Blazers up by 10. Newton will go to the line and try to add some salt to the wound of Alabama Huntsville. Huntsville's gonna move to three and five in conference play, and it's gonna make it tough for them to expect to go to Tupelo, but the Blazers now will move to seven and one and have a very, very good shot of making it to Tupelo as the number one seed from the Gulf South Conference East. What an honor that's gonna be. Newton's first free throw is good. 58-47. Blazers can make it 12 points once again. And it is nothing but nylon. Tracy Newton averages almost 36 minutes and 12 points a game against conference foes. That's no different from this one. Shot at the buzzer, no good by Julie Richardson, and that means that Valdosta State has taken it. They moved to 17 and three overall, seven and one in the conference. Coach Hill has got to be happy about a team that, as you said, outscored Alabama Huntsville in the, from the second half and even late in the first half by nearly double. 50 over 50 to less than 25. Unbelievable scoring effort, unbelievable turnaround in that first half. The Valdosta State Lady Blazers take this one by a final score of 59-47. Stay with us here on BSU TV. We'll be back with Neil Folger and the men's game. Alabama Huntsville and Valdosta State men's basketball coming up next on BSU TV. Diversification, it's a pretty big word, but easy to understand, especially when it comes to structuring your investment portfolio. Having diversity in your investments is always a good idea. It not only makes your overall portfolio more balanced, it can provide you with a little peace of mind by helping you minimize your risks. Simply put, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Learn more about the importance of diversifying your portfolio and choose to save. Properly inflating my tires burns less fuel and saves me money on gas. Yeah, I'm saving Mother Nature from pollution, but more importantly, she saved me 11 bucks. Ow! Environmental events, get green. By keeping my car regularly tuned, I save money on gas and repairs. That also means cleaner air. You know, feels good to help save the cash planet. Environmental events, get green. For more tips, go to getgreen.com. Valdosta State University, Georgia's regional partner, combining classroom and research opportunities, giving students the skills they need to achieve in a new millennium. From water purification research to archaeological excavations, Valdosta State students and professors work together in the laboratory and in the community. Hands-on learning, real-world research. Valdosta State University is Georgia's regional partner. Welcome back on VSU TV, and it's time for the main event, men's Blazer basketball. The University of Alabama Huntsville has charged in here to play the Blazers today. The Huntsville team, 10 and 10 on the season, but three and four, and they've been hot as of late. The Blazers, six and one in conference play, and on top of the GSE East, tied with arch rival West Georgia. Alongside Neil Folger, I'm Bryce Zimmerman. Now, Neil, this is a very, very hot Huntsville team. What do the Blazers have to do to be successful today? Well, like you said before, Bryce, they're very hot. They've won their past three games, two away from Huntsville, so it's going to be very important for the Blazers to come out and control the backdoor picks, to control the three-point shooting. They need to have very good perimeter defense, and they need to rebound the ball very well. When they almost won back in Huntsville, UAH did a very good job of getting rebounds, so the Blazers need to do that in order to get a win. All right, the starting lineup for your Valdosta State Blazers at point guard, a speedy man, Gerard Jones, in his senior season. Your shooting guard is number 23. That's Tony Baker. He's also a senior. True freshman, Travis Nelson, gets the start as your shooting guard and your power forward, Ben Bates, back on the team after three years away. Your center is two weeks ago, player of the week in the Gulf South Conference, John Rogers. When we come back, we've got men's Blazer basketball action. Stay with us. We need your help on our journey to a Gulf South Conference championship. A journey is always better shared, believe. As you know, every game counts for the preseason ranked Blazers. Come help us chase another regular season title and trip to the NCAA tournament. There'll be 20 days and nights of basketball action in the complex at BSU. For your tickets, call 333-5890. Welcome back to Valdosta, Georgia. We are at the complex, and we are here to see Blazer men's basketball, led by head coach Jim Yarbrough. The Blazers 
are six and one in conference play and tied on top of the Gulf South Conference East Division today. Alabama Huntsville and the Chargers invade town. Tip off just seconds away and there it is. John Rogers wins it, but it's taken away by Jason Smith. Smith. We're about the back doors, Bryce. They love to run that Princeton style offense and get those back door cuts. So I go Carvalho back to Smith. Smith looking inside for Easterly. Gardner, inside, nice taken away by Tony Baker. Baker pressing the issue down to John Rogers, who lays it in. Great transition basketball by the Blazers there, Bryce. Valdosta State off to a quick start, 2-0 lead, just 30 seconds into this one. Gardner now over to Smith. Smith to Cavallo, looking inside, knocked away John Rogers. Easterly with it. Now Gardner back over to Carvalho for three. Front iron, no good. JJ with the rebound. That's Gerard Jones, a senior from here in Valdosta. Tony Baker pulls up the three. Nothing but net. Quick start, five, nothing. A little bit of taste of UAH's own medicine against them, how UAH loves to shoot the three ball. And Valdosta State's come out and done a great job, as you see there, another great example of Travis Nelson poking that ball away. Tenacious defense is Jim Yarbrough's Marquee, Valdosta State always has a good defense this year, second in the nation. Easterly, who had 25 points against Valdosta in their last meeting. A 66-64 overtime victory for the Blazers. This is Benford, now to Jason Smith. Carvalho, who's from Brazil, now Jason Gardner with it. Gardner drives with the left hand, has it sawed nice it away, block. Tony Baker. J.J. bringing it up quickly for Valdosta State. He'll penetrate, tries, dishes off, Ben Bates good. What a move by Gerard Jones, just leading that team. The senior captain from Valdosta, Georgia, the point guard. 30-second timeout taken by Alabama Huntsville, and they're down 7-0 here, 18-22 remaining in this one already. Blazers up 7-0, good energy to start this one off. Excellent energy to start this one off with Bryce, something they did not show when they last played UAH up in Huntsville, Alabama. Great intensity on the defensive end, and then just the ability to just penetrate through the Alabama Huntsville set and just score seven early points with 18-22 to go in the first half. Blazers put on a little half-court trap here, trying to force Alabama Huntsville maybe to turn this one over. JJ provides a little pressure. Tiago Carvalho bringing it up, a native of Brazil. This is his second year as a Charger. Easterly, a 6'8", Player from Lebanon, Tennessee, this is Jason Gardner. Jamie Gardner, excuse me. Now Benford. Benford over to Carvalho, who moves around the screen. Ben Bates fouled him, moved with him, gave him a little shoulder shove. First foul of the day for either team. Carvalho might be a little bit too quick for Ben Bates to, to handle, but we'll see what adjustments both Ben Bates and Jim Yarbrough's defense do to go against that. Nice lead pass from Jason Smith to Jamie Gardner. Now Smith. Back with the ball, Benford swings it around Carvalho. Easterly for three with John Rogers in his face. Back iron, no good. Rebound up and taken away by Gerard Jones, but it rolls out of bounds. Unlucky break there. Tony Baker with a smile on his face. It'll be Alabama Huntsville ball. Gerard Jones, the smallest man on the court. Skies to get that attempted rebound, but to no use. Gardner up with the right hand, no good. Blazers are pushing it. J.J. looking to penetrate the lane, swings it out. Ben Bates for three with a man in his face, rims just out. Rogers couldn't come up with the rebound. And now Jason Smith bringing it back. Fast-paced action here in Valdosta State's very own complex. Benford, now Smith, 17-18 remaining in the first half. Jamie Gardner, he's their top guy, averaging over 13 points a game. Carvalho with it. Carvalho. Now to Smith. Smith, another leading scorer for this Charger team. Easterly back to Gardner, who will pop the three. Front iron, no good. Rebound to Benford. He puts it off the glass, no good. Ben Bates with the rebound. It looks like Alabama Huntsville's having trouble putting the biscuit in the basket as we speak. J.J. cuts to the lane, goes up and fouled. He'll shoot two. From one end to the other, great court presence by J.J. there. One of the best defenders in the GSC. Also one of the best assistants. Team leaders in the GSC. 
Alabama Huntsville yet to score. They've had some good looks though. Jamie Gardner, their top guys, missed three shots now in a row. Contribute that once again to Jimmy Arbor's defense. He knows what he's talking about. JJ's first free throw is nothing but net. Makes it eight nothing to start this game. It's gonna be key for the Blazers to maintain this type of play throughout the entire first half. Not to let UIH get back in this ball game with a big run. JJ puts the second one home. Now applying a little bit of pressure on Smith. Smith, bringing it up court. Benford, now Carvalho. Tiago maybe got away with a the travel there. Now Gardner. Back to Smith, Benford, Gardner cutting through. Now Easterly fakes the three, sends it back out. Give and go, great pass there by Tiago Carvalho. Back inside to Daniel Easterly. Good play from Alabama Huntsville. Very good play, Bryce. J.J. moving the ball around. Alley, oop pass. John Rogers couldn't put it up. He'll go back up with it. No foul call. Gets his own rebound. He's called for traveling, though, and he can't believe it because he did not have possession of the basketball. He looks like he got Maul going up for that rebound. I'm surprised there wasn't a foul called on UAH. End of the game, Wayne Popwell, a 6'7 sophomore from Hazel Green, Alabama, for Alabama Huntsville, along with him, Michael De La Rosa. Micah De La Rosa, number three for Alabama Huntsville. He's from Macon, Georgia, and he has been one hot player for the Chargers. They try to get the ball in to De La Rosa, but they can't do it. It's taken away by the Blazers and Ben Bates. Gerard Jones back. He'll cut through the middle. Now out to Travis Nelson. Nelson looks inside, taken away. Gardner. Gardner pressing the issue. Now back out, Gardner pump fake. Go, let's draw Jones go by him. Big shot from the outside is good from Wayne Popwell. He hits for three, and all of a sudden it's nine to five. Alabama Huntsville closes the gap to four. They put on a little run here, Bryce. It's important for the Blazers to come back down to the offensive side and get some points in the, in the, on the board. Baker sends it over to Gerard Jones. Jumped out on by Della Rosa. Tony Baker pump fake, swings it back to Gerard Jones. He'll pump fake the three and now take it, and it's front iron no good. De La Rosa the rebound out to Gardner. Gardner 6'5", and he can play like a point guard. Micah De La Rosa sets the screen now. Popwell underneath. Popwell, the turnaround jump shot, no good. Great defense by Ben Bates. JJ once again going down the lane, tried to go up with the left hand, no foul called as Popwell was all over him, and this fan base is screaming at the refs. Coach Yarbrough's face is near Crimson over there, Bryce. He's really upset about Adder that no-call. now swings it over to David Ivey. Ivey, a junior from Birmingham. This is Micah De La Rosa. Back to Ivey, great move there by Ivey. Goes up with it off the glass and good. Great pump That's fake there Ivey. by David Ivey. He just took the entire VSU defense to school. And like I was saying before, Bryce, UAH has put on a little run here. It's important for VSU to uh, counter this run with some points of their own. 14.09 remaining. In the first half of play, Travis Nelson out to Jerron Jones. Tony Baker, he'll pump fake, he'll take the shot, no, pass it back out, Jerron Jones, 17 left on the shot clock. Travis Nelson, pump fake, Jerron Jones is gonna drive the lane, didn't see anything going, got some help, knocked away by Graham Adderholt, a sophomore from Athens, Georgia. A lot, three Georgia natives on this team, one of which did not make the trip, Michael Vega. Just under 14 minutes remaining. Blazers up by two. They jumped out to a 9-0 lead, and now Alabama Huntsville, as Neil pointed out, has gone on the 7-0 run. Ben Mallett checks into the game. Now Tony Baker fakes the three. John Banks, a true freshman, into the game. Baker for three. This one is off the back iron, no good. Rebound comes out to Gardner. They needed to have a better shot selection there, Bryce. Too quick, too quick of a shot there. Popwell, now to Ivy. Ivy. Sends Ben Mallet around the screen. Back to Ivy. Huntsville with 17 on the shot clock. Gardner looking to do a little give and go. Back out Jamie Gardner. He's wide open, decided not to take a three. Back to Ivy. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Ivy rolling around on his left hand. Blazers, good defense. Tried to find Gardner cutting, thrown away. Blazers, excellent defense stand. Great defense stand. They did not allow the backdoor screen to, uh, to happen, or well, they didn't allow much time up into the three-point area for, uh, for three-point shot for UAH. 
13 minutes remaining in this one. 9 7, Blazers up by two. Ben Mallet bringing her along, wearing the double deuce. Back to Mallet. Mallet now a senior. It seems just like days ago, he was a freshman. John Banks, an actual true freshman. He's got a lot of playing time this season with Michael Crane being out the last couple games for Valdosta State. Tony Baker trying to work on two men. Six seconds remaining. Ray Kennedy's checked into the game. The sophomore drives to the lane, tries to dish it back to John Rockers. Shot was not got off before the shot clock by Tony Baker. Blazers turn that one over, so another defensive stand this time for UAH. Flip-flop of fortune there, Bryce. 12 and a half remaining in the first half of play. This is a very defensive game, Bryce, and we thought that coming into the night's game. Micah De La Rosa. Now Jason Smith, Ivy, Popwell, back to Jason Smith. He beats Ben Mallet, tries to go to lane. Mallet comes from behind, knocks the ball out of bounds. Blazers will not get the ball. JJ returns to the game. Tony Baker goes out. The persistence there by Ben Mallet to still continue ball with the play, even though he missed the assignment. He came back and he knocked the ball out of bounds. De La Rosa, Popwell, now to Ivy. Ivy, Popwell again. Tripped by Kennedy. And now a shot from Jason Smith is good. Tie game, 9-9, just under 12 minutes. UAH has himself has themselves a 9-0 run in the past three minutes and 30 seconds, Bryce. Gerard Jones, guarded by Smith. Now John Banks. Ray Kennedy pops out to the top of the key, no good. Inside John Rogers, this is our first look at him. He is not fouled. Ball was stripped away cleanly by Alabama Huntsville. Ben Mallett working on the baseline. Gerard Jones now to Banks. Inside, John Rogers on the block, goes up with the right hand. It's good and the foul. Great persistence there, Bryce. They saw John Rogers with the advantage inside, and they knew they had to get the ball to him. He, he has a, not much of a size advantage inside, but his presence just demands so much. John Rogers just two years ago came to Valdosta State and did not have a very refined inside game. He was an outstanding leaper and an outstanding shot blocker. He has really evolved into one of the best all-around players in the Gulf South Conference. And his free throw shooting had gotten better. He misses that one as it rattles out rebound to Huntsville. Jason Smith. Might have gotten a little push well. off. Inside, Daniel Easterly. Easterly, pump fake, goes back. Popwell wasn't ready for the pass, and now here's Ray Kennedy. Kennedy screaming down the sideline. Foul called on Jason Smith as he bumped Kennedy out of bounds. 11.08 remaining, just the second team foul for Alabama Huntsville. Very low, very low scoring game here, Bryce. Very low fouling game as well, but we knew that coming in. Valdosta State. Recently has been able to stay out of foul trouble for the most part, especially big man John Rogers, who's now taking a seat for Ben Bates into the game. John Banks, he'll pull up the jump shot. It was contested, front rim no good. Looked like, a little, looked like it was partially blocked there by Graham Adderholt. Here's Ivy. David Ivy bringing the ball across. Jason Smith. Smith loses it, picks it up. Good defense there from Ben Mallett. Adderholt moves the ball, Popwell. Boy, these Chargers really move the ball lightning quick. Here's Easterly at the top of the key. Now Ivy, who's going to cut to the lane and lays it up and in with one hand as he was pops possibly fouled. Oh, Ivy with a good play there, and it's tied at 11 again. 10 minutes, 15 seconds. Rod Jones, the senior, bringing the ball up for Coach Jim Yarborough's Blazers. Ben Mallett. Gets the ball. Now he's on the far side wing on the baseline, dribbling around. Finds John Banks. Back to Mallet. Blazers a little bit stagnant, trying to get some movement going. Gerard Jones. JJ with eight on the shot clock. Gets a pick set by Ray Kennedy. Gerard Jones is going to have to penetrate. He's going to go up with a shot. No foul oh. call. Ivy comes up with it, and here's Daniel Easterly, who stops, gets fouled. They're going to actually wave off the shot on Ben Mallett, no points. Easterly will, I guess, go to the line for two. I'm not quite sure how that's gonna work. Looks like it's gonna be on the floor here, Bryce. But a timeout taken, and we'll take one as well. The game is tied at 11 with 9.42 remaining. We'll be back on VSU TV with the rest of the first half. 
I got a ham sandwich and some pretzels. You want some pretzels? No, I'm about to trade you some cookies or something. Like what? I don't know. But an orange. Forget it. Hey, Jay, you got anything? Don't ask Jay. Why not? Jay never has me. What's up with that? Are you on a diet or something? Yeah, a diet. Jay's on a diet. That's all right, man. We, we understand. My mom's on a diet. <laughs> Back on VSU-TV, 9.42 remaining in the first half of play. This game is deadlocked at 11. Valdosta State jumped out to an early 9-0 lead. Alabama Huntsville countered with a 7-0 run, and since then they've been trading punches. Smith goes all the way back to Ivy. David Ivy. Now back to Jason Smith. He's a scoring three. He's got 10, averaging 10 a game. Easterly goes up with the right hand. Foul called, I guess, on Ben Bates. With about nine and a half minutes remaining, Easterly will go to the line. This is a man that scored 25 points in the first meeting, along with 21 from Jamie Gardner. They accounted for nearly 70% of Alabama Huntsville's points. It's going to be very crucial for the Blazers to find a way to stop them tonight. We don't want to have another performance like that on our hands. John Rogers checking back into the game for Valdosta State. Just one week ago, he was named the first player named under Coach Yarbrough's tenure, Player of the Week in the Gulf South Conference. The first time in five years. Well-deserved honor, Bryce. John Rogers has been playing excellent basketball the past couple of weeks. It's about time the Gulf South Conference recognized an individual blazer, but this team plays so much like a team, they don't really rely on individuals for victory. Down by two, both free throws were good from Easterly. JJ, looking inside to John. Now about Ben Mallett. Foul called on Daniel Easterly. As things were getting fairly physical down there on the block with John Rogers. They have to be physical with John Rogers. There's no other way to play him. Easterly stands at 6'8". He's a junior, so he's played in this league for a little while. He'll come out, and sophomore center Micah De La Rosa comes in. This is a man, De La Rosa, that scored 19 points, 17 points, and 15 in his last three contests. And those last three contests have been when UAH has been playing very good ball. Banks, now to JJ. Over to Ben Mallett. Zone here. They're going to trap him on the baseline. All the way across, John Banks for three. Front iron, no good. Ben Bates can't hold the rebound. Has actually bounced off his head. He kind of took a funny bounce. Thought he was going to have to sky for that rebound. Came at a funny angle and couldn't corral it. Under nine minutes. Jamie Gardner, Huntsville's main scoring threat. He is tall for a guard, Bryce. 6-5. This team has five players that stand 6-5 or taller. And here's Ivy cutting out, dishes to Michael De La Rosa for three. He's 6'10", and he, he can shoot the deep ball. ball. They all can shoot the three ball here, Bryce. That's one of their main aspects of their game, like we, like we pointed out in the pregame. Love to shoot the three ball. Blazers now down five, 11 to 16 the score. Coach Lenny Acuff complaining about something there on the sideline. Gerard Jones over to John Banks, now Ben Mallett. Kennedy, back to Mallett. Blazers looking to get something going. Ben Mallett goes, dribbles to the lane, dishes out. Gerard Jones with one on the shot clock, and it is off the front iron, no good. No foul called as Tiago Carvalho absolutely elbowed Ray Kennedy, and he can't believe it. He wrapped his arms around Kennedy. Carvalho now over Jason Smith. Smith driving the lane, goes up, passes it off to De La Rosa. Now back out Ivy, who will pop the three, and he's fouled. Gerard Jones fouled Ivy. Ivy, he should get an Oscar. Yeah, for real. Gerard Jones is first. Unbelievable acting job by David Ivy, but that means he'll go to the line for three. Seven and a half minutes remaining here, 11 to 16. Blazers down by five. First free throw rolls off for Ivy. So a little bit of karma going the Blazers' way as Ivy draws a foul on some acting and misses the first free throw. The second one is also no good. All right. 
Well, now it looks like it was a good foul. Yeah. Back in for Valdosta State, Travis Nelson, the true freshman. He's had some outstanding games so far this season. And the senior, Tony Baker. JJ knew something we didn't when he fouled him. The third one is finally good, which puts Alabama Huntsville up by six with seven minutes and 32 remaining. Let's see if the Blazers go back inside to John Rogers. He's, he's gotten some easy looks and he's gotten some hard looks in this game. Maybe getting them more active would be better for the Blazers. Nelson with it at the top of the key. They're definitely looking for John Rogers, but De La Rosa doing a good job. Tony Baker puts up a contested shot, no good. Alabama Huntsville really forcing the Blazers to shoot from outside. Blazers need to be doing a better job of rebounding as well. The shot clock had actually not gone out. I'm not quite sure what happened. I think the shot clock was not reset after the change of possession, which caused the buzzer to go off. The referees blew the whistle, calling it dead. So it's kind of like a referee's timeout, unofficial timeout taken here. The referees now getting the Blazers back on the court, breaking them up from Coach Yarbrough, who always has something to say. His Either mouth, whether it's to the referee or his players. His mouth is never shut, Bryce. That's a good thing in college basketball. De La Rosa now to Gardner. Inside, uncontested, fouled, put home. That ball did not go in by Carvalho, but he'll go to the line for two. Travis Nelson is looking the other way. Credit UAH. Credit UAH for seeing that. For seeing that. Look at Travis Nelson. Give Carvalho, Carvalho the ball. To the line for the Carvalho's first free throw attempt is good. That puts the Chargers up seven. He's got a chance to put them up by as much as eight, which be, would be the biggest lead for Alabama Huntsville in this game. And he does. 19 to 11, Alabama Huntsville on top. Gerard Jones to bring it down for Valdosta State, looking for a, a constant scoring option. They've not scored consistently here in the last five or six minutes. Travis Nelson rises to shoot a jump shot, no good. Tony Baker looking for the rebound. Carvalho and his own man go up. Foul called. I'm not quite sure what the foul is going to be called on. It's going to be called on David Ivey, Bryce. Alabama Huntsville gets the foul Alabama called against him. It's their fourth, and now first. fifth team foul. Tony Baker will go to the line and really Tony hustle Baker with three Alabama Huntsville Chargers around him to get that rebound. Tony Baker is definitely one of the leaders on this ball club, guys. Unfortunately, leaves that one a little bit short. This is a game where the Blazers, and really any Gulf South Conference game, you cannot give away points. Second free throw is good, bringing the Blazers back within seven. Full court press, Bryce. Kind of a one-man full court press, Gerard Jones. Jason Smith just pestering him, not letting him get up the, field, up the court. Easily, De La Rosa now back to Smith, who looks back to De La Rosa. John Rogers was fooled, and they could not put that one home. Shot is no good. Rogers picks it up. Travis Nelson, who goes up. There's a foul called. To me, it looked like he had traveled. Foul called. So a few calls here recently going Valdosta State's way, and De La Rosa is not very happy about that. I guess, I guess the foul occurred before Travis Nelson put his feet down which is good for us. We'll take any advantages that float our way. It must be a body contact foul because Nelson was not in the act of shooting, therefore the Blazers will inbound it. Tony Baker skies and could not put it home. Body contact, but De La Rosa did not be aggressive with it. No foul called. Still a seven-point lead for Alabama Huntsville. With this lead, I wouldn't be surprised to see UAX play a little ball control like they're doing right now, take some time off this clock and find a better shot for them to take. Six minutes to go. They challenge shot. Ooh! Not a very smart play from Jason Smith to try to take on John Rogers. Apparently, they called the foul on John Rogers, who blocked the shot and ended up catching himself up in the net and falling to the floor. And he's very upset with that foul being called against him. That's his first personal foul. Jason Smith goes to the line. Rogers really hit the board board very solid. Smith. First free throw is good. Under six minutes, checking back in for Alabama Huntsville. Wayne Popwell, 6'7", sophomore. 
Second free throw from Smith is good. Also in the Hartsville, Another four, sub four, coming four, back four, in, Marcus four. Benford. Under six minutes remaining, 21-12. Valdosta State down by nine. Just has to point out for you here, Bryce. Alabama Huntsville is shooting six of 14 from the floor, while VSU is shooting four of 14 from the floor. So obviously, VSU needs to work on better shot selection. Gerard Jones, good. Pass fake now goes up with the left hand good. Was that Michael Jordan? I couldn't tell. Was that Michael Jordan? Gerard Jones with a pump fake up and under, put it back home with his left hand. 21-14, lead cut to seven. Jamie Gardner, now De La Rosa. Back to Ivy, pick set by De La Rosa. Another pick, Gardner, look at this ball movement. They look like the Harlem Globetrotters, the way they pass the ball around the perimeter. Like a weave type play. Here's Ivy looking inside, Gardner with the reverse lay in. Boy, they milked the clock and then put it home. Jamie Gardner. Outstanding play to go up and under with his right hand. And Valdosta State now once again down by nine. Tony Baker to bring it up. UAH is doing a good job of getting some cuts into the middle part of the lane, something I didn't expect him to do. Tony Baker's shot from the top of the key, no good. There were no Blazers in the vicinity of the goal. They didn't obviously need to do a better job of getting rebounds. That's something that killed them last time up in Huntsville. Four and a half minutes remaining in this one. First half of play in the complex. David Ivey with the spin move goes up, no good. He actually had Gerard Jones faked out of his pants on that play. Blazers down by nine. JJ once again, he's gonna go to the rack, he's gonna get fouled. It dipped, it dunked, and it went through the basket. Fouled off the state with a chance for an old fashioned three point play. Forget about Magic, forget about Michael Jordan. Let's talk Magic Johnson. JJ will shoot one from the line. Four minutes, 15 seconds remaining. For the Blazers, he'll shoot one shot. Coach Lenny Acuff can't believe his eyes as JJ for the second time as he misses the free throw. Ball goes out of bounds. Blazers thought it might have been theirs, but it's actually Alabama Huntsville's. I thought it could have been ours. And a timeout too. being timeout called 30 second timeout. Blazers down by, see, four, seven. They're down go. by seven points. There you go. Listen. Every Thursday from 8 to 10 p.m. on the X's and O's show, V91 WVBS Valdosta 90.9 FM brings you Sports Talk Without the Itch. A lot of sports talk. A it's basically the only place you can go here at Valdosta State and get the student voice of Valdosta State Athletics. Considering both of us are regularly on the show, considering you are the creator of the show. So we look here, isn't this a beautiful banner right here, Bryce? 2004 football national championships that was raised at the last home game against Montevallo. An unbelievable ceremony. Half the crowd actually got to touch the national championship trophies. I haven't washed my hands since. Four minutes, 10 seconds. Blazers down, 23-16. Seven point deficit. Oh. Gerard Jones bumped away by Jason Smith. No foul called. And here we go back into that weave. Gardner. Why was there no offensive foul call? Now Marcus Benford, inside to De La Rosa. Back to Benford. Benford, little body contact there on Travis Nelson. Here's the pick, the shot from behind. The pick is no good by Popwell. Rebound, skied for and gotten by John Rogers. That's the type of style we're used to seeing UAH play, controlling, controlling the clock, getting the good luck to the basket. And good defense though, always prevails. A lot of movement from both offenses in this game. Travis Nelson gets stopped. Now out to Tony Baker. John Rogers with some help on the block. Goes up, was apparently not fouled. No whistle blown. Three minutes, 15 seconds. Jason Smith calling the play. Marcus Benford on your near side wing. Gardner. Back to Benford, now over to Popwell. Good defense by the Blazers. Jamie Gardner with the right hand, saw some open, took the jump shot instead, missed. Rebound, offensive rebound for Alabama Huntsville, and they get a new 35. Let's see the Blazers can come up with a turnover here, Bryce. De La Rosa tries to sneak a pass in to Jason Smith, and the Blazers do come up with that turnover. 
I'm psychic, I tell you, I'm psychic. But great defense there by JJ, not allowing, not allowing Jason Smith to get that ball. Two minutes, 38 seconds left in this first half of play. The Blazers are gonna try to cut the lead with this possession. He can cut it to five with a two and four with a three. Gerard Jones. Now John Banks looking inside to John Rogers. Banks now finds it in. John Rogers, turnaround jump shot, no good. He left it a little bit short. Rebound to Jason Smith. That's a good look from John Rogers, one that he's accustomed to putting home. They just seem to follow the shot more, Bryce. Get some more offensive rebounds equals more point chances. Inside from Adderholt now, De La Rosa spin move, goes up with the right hand, and he is hacked by John Rogers. That was number 34, John Rogers, his second. Second foul on John Rogers. You can see a little bit of the frustration on John Rogers' face. He's not quite sure what's going on right now. What's, go what's, what's going on is that he's not the only skyscraper on the floor for a chance. Because UAH has some taller sc skyscrapers of their own. First free throw is left short by De La Rosa. We talked about how hot he's been in the past three games, but we haven't seen him really explode for any points here in the first half. Two minutes remaining. He'll get one more shot. Both teams at 17 fouls, so with the next foul, they'll be in the one-on-one -on -one situation. Shot is good from the free throw line by De La Rosa, which leaves the Blazers down by eight. Jones, now to Banks, in the near side corner. Banks to Tony Baker. Baker drives. Puts one up with the right hand and it rims out. Would that have been a big shot there. That was as good of a look as Tony Baker could have gotten there. Jason Smith. Now to Gardner. This is Adderholt. Back to Gardner. Or excuse me, that's Smith. Inside to De La Rosa. De La Rosa posting up. Using his height. Partially blocked by John Rogers, but he still muscled it through. 10 point Alabama Huntsville lead. Seems like VSU has no way of containing the big, tall players for the Chargers here, Bryce. Draw Jones looking for his man. He's found it, Travis Nelson. Nelson, the pull-up jump shot, no good. Rebound, John Rogers, and he puts it home. There's that, an offensive rebound. That's what we're going to have to do a better job of, Bryce, getting offensive rebounds, putting them in for second and third chance points. Under a minute remaining. Blazers cut the lead to eight, down 26 to 18. Only 18 offensive points for Valdosta State. Benford, now Jamie Gardner. Adderholt, back to Gardner. Gardner on his left hand, kicks it back out to De La Rosa. De La Rosa leaves it for Benford. Benford going around, had it slapped away. This one is gonna be off a blazer. Off a of blazer in Alabama Huntsville. And it looked like no referee wanted to make that call. I saw the ball go off of Marcus Benford, number 44. And how I can see it, and three refs closer to the ball, not see it, that's just, that's poor. Smith now to Adderholt, back to Smith. Smith on his left hand, spin move, got away with one, blocked away by John Rogers. 18 seconds, Travis Nelson, and he lost the ball, and as it poked away, and everybody's diving for it, timeout called. Alabama Huntsville, Jamie Gardner, what a heads up play, jumped on that ball, called a timeout. Valdosta State now will have to play defense for the last 13.5 seconds. It's crazy, it's been a crazy first half, Bryce. The scoreboard doesn't show it, but the intensity and the way these two teams have played this first half, I wouldn't have been surprised to see it be 36-28. Both teams have missed a lot of shot opportunities here in the first half. Both teams definitely have. In the first, it was Alabama Huntsville missing the shots, and now it's been Valdosta State. They've been relegated to shooting outside. We saw that put back by John Rogers. That might have been one of the few times the Blazers had, have had the opportunity to put the ball in the bucket from the paint. Forget about opportunity. That was the only time that, that was the only time I saw white jerseys in the paint in a long time. The Blazers need to do a better shot of following their shots and getting those second chance points. I can't stress how important that is, how that's gonna be in the second half. Jason Smith bringing it up. Jason Smith poked away by Gerard Jones. It's going to be Alabama Huntsville's ball. One of the best defenders in the Gulf South Conference, that maybe one of the best defenders in the 50 year history of VSU basketball. 
Jarrell Jones. Seven seconds. Now down to five, four. Ivy pulls up, floats one. Offensive foul. That one went in, but it's an offensive foul. And now they're going to overrule it. The near side referee called an offensive foul. The far side referee called a defensive foul. And the bucket counts. Well, let's, let's see what's going on here. Coach Yarbrough is stressing that it's one and one. Mass confusion here on the, on the court. Not quite sure. We've got two referees at center court discussing what went on, and they're going to give them a one and one. If they give them a one and one, it might, it might be the charge. Uh, it's going to be a charge. The, the bucket goes home, but the foul was after the bucket was released, or the ball was released from the hand of the player, I believe. And that will Tony result Baker's in a one and one for Tony State. Baker at the line, so one apparently. One. <laughs> So a bizarre way to end this first half. 1.4 seconds remaining. Tony Baker, his first free throw is no good. And that will be it for the first half of play. Blazers down 28 to 18. A 10 point deficit for coach Jim Yarbrough and his Valdosta State Blazers. This is the first, not the first time they've been down to Alabama Huntsville. They see if the Blazers can come back when we come back right here on VSU TV. You do not want to miss the way this one's going to end. someone a fish. You feed them for a day. Teach someone to fish. You feed them for a lifetime. Give me a fish and you'll feed me for a day. Teach me to fish and you'll feed me for a lifetime. Through Volunteers of America, you can help change lives in your community. Free exercise guide for folks over 50. Call 1-800-222-2225. Welcome back on VSU TV, Valdosta State taking on Alabama Huntsville. Unfortunately for the Blazers, they're down by 10 after the first half of play. And you know why? Because the Blazers shot 30.4%, a horrible 30.4% in that first half. Seven for 23, only one for nine from three point range. That's what saved them against West Florida last Saturday. It's not saving them today against UAH because UAH is playing. They're playing defense, but obviously both defenses can improve. UAH is shooting 42.9% from the field. They're shooting two of seven from three points. But the big key, I, I had a key here too. 17 total rebounds to 12. 14 defensive rebounds for UAH and only three offensive rebounds for Valdosta State. Obviously, the Blazers need to get some more presence inside it. Alabama Huntsville, this is the first time since last year that we've been able to see Lenny Acuff's offense. So much movement out of the Alabama Huntsville awesome. They love, they love to hit those cutters in the lane for easy layups. And Valdosta State's going to have to try to find a way to stop the Chargers' O. Gerard Jones, Blazers start off with the ball. Just underway here from the complex in Valdosta, Georgia. Tony Baker, near side wing. Dribble, back out to Ben Bates, guarded by Carvalho. Gerard Jones, thought about the three, decided not to pass it. Zone, zone defense, excuse me, here for Alabama Huntsville. Gerard Jones up to the lane, reverse no good. Blaze was a little bit lackluster on that offensive rebound opportunity. I thought for a minute there he got thwacked up there, but I guess no calls. Carvalho now out to Smith. Inside wide open, Daniel Easterly. He went up with it, has it knocked away. John Rogers definitely altered that shot. Now Smith. 
This is Benford. Back over to Gardner. Far side wing, Easterly at the top of the key, drawing John Rogers out of the paint. Trying to post up now is Gardner. They lob it in, stolen away by Tony Baker. Bad decision there by Daniel Easterly to throw that ball, obviously in bad positioning. Baker tried to get a little bit too fancy and dish that one off to John Rogers. Gerard Jones, Marcus Benford has it blocked by John Rogers, hustling back to get on defense and swatted that one against the glass. Still 10 point lead here for Alabama Huntsville. No one scored so far in the second. Travis Nelson for three, nothing but nylon. That's what needs to happen. Travis Nelson scored 22 points up in Huntsville to one handedly take that victory for the Blazers. Let's see if we get him more involved. Let's see if Dabra gets him more involved in the game plan. Just like that, the lead cut to seven. Carvalho, now to Jason Smith. Benford, back to Carvalho, back to Benford. Benford going up with the right hand, a little bit too strong off the glass. Shot once again altered by John Rogers. Rod Jones brings it up court quickly. Nelson, back to John Rogers. Tony Baker. Travis Nelson, Blazers slowing it down a little bit. Bates, Tony Baker gets the pick, tries to find Gerard Jones and he saves it. Looked like that ball was gonna go out of bounds. Gerard Jones saved it away. Tony Baker, eight on the shot clock. Baker pulls up with the jump shot, way short. Rebound is cannot be saved by Ben Bates. Turnover on Valdosta State. No. Oh no, it was tipped. So a referee runs over to make the call. It's about time. Three <laughs> seconds left on the shot clock. Let's see the Blazers. 17-28 remaining, 28-21. Tony Baker for three, it's air balled. Shot clock violation. Seven minutes, 22 seconds remaining. Valdosta State couldn't get a good shot away. Credit the three seconds left on the shot clock there, not the UAH defense. Blazers went in a rush to get a shot off. Alabama Huntsville is a middle of the pack defense, not really you know, very high or very low in the Gulf South Conference, but today they really look good. Either that or the Blazers just look very flat shooting the ball. Probably a combination, of, well, probably a combination of both. The issue not getting good looks and shooting the bad looks, and UAH's zone defense getting the best of them tonight. Gardner up and under, blocked by Rodgers. Another one foul called on Ben Bates, a late whistle. Ben Bates cannot believe it. The Blazers really. Really very defensive about pretty much every foul that's been called underneath the basket. Maybe this one's being called a little bit tighter than the Blazers are used to. I guess so. Usually, usually I never see the Blazers get this upset about, fall, about fouls. They, like you said, they've been not committing many fouls in the past couple of games. Under 17 minutes remaining. Jamie Gardner knocks down the first of two free throws, putting Alabama Huntsville back up by eight points. Gardner's second try. It's good. Baker to inbound now. Gerard Jones bringing it up for the flamed red and black. Tony Baker. Screen set by John Rogers. Nelson. Bumped by oh. Carvalho. No foul called there. He finds Ben Bates. Count the bucket. And the foul, Ben Bates, the old-fashioned three-point try. Once again, Valdosta State cuts the lead to seven. Looks like the refs are a little bit hesitant in making decision calls tonight, Bryce. They were that in the first half, and about a five, maybe even like similar to a five-second delay call here, calling the defensive the foul against John Banks. H. John Banks enters the game for Valdosta State. Great look there by Tony Baker to find Ben Bates as he realized that he had been double-teamed. Free throw is no good from Ben Bates. Valdosta State free throw shooting three of seven in that first half, and it hasn't looked any better here to start the second. Easterly. Now Gardner fakes the three. Back out and back to Gardner. Carvalho kicks it back to Gardner. This time he pops it from three short again. Luckily for the Blazers, Gardner's shot has been off all night. Otherwise, this could be a three drubbing from Alabama Huntsville. Down seven though, the Blazers can cut it to five or three with a three-pointer. Four with a three-pointer. Bates, now to Banks. Tony Baker. JJ calling for the screen, but he gives it up now. John Banks lob inside John Rogers, who's hacked 
doesn't finish the play, but he'll get two from the free throw line, John Rogers. And they finally get it inside and let him go get some fouls or at least try to put the biscuit in the basket. That's been the part of VSU's game plan ever since John Rogers has had, has gone on this little roll he's had this year. There hasn't been a defined period of games where he hasn't been a vital part of this offense for the Blazers. 15 minutes, 49 seconds. Rodgers, first free throw is good. And one of the main things that John Rodgers has been doing better is free throw shooting. He's been doing a lot better to get that ball in the basket when time has stopped to put points on the board for the Blazers. Just two Mondays ago, a 10 for 10 performance from the free throw line against Manavala. Second one is good. In that game, he totaled 24 points. Carvalho, the big man, bringing it down for Alabama Huntsville. Benford, now Easterly, back to Smith. Gardner to Carvalho. Every Alabama Huntsville player seems to touch the ball in every possession. Easterly, backing in, lost possession of the ball. Benford, now over to Carvalho for three, and a block. Ben Bates blocks it. The ball goes out of bounds, and it's going Valdosta State's way. Good hustle there. Valdosta State now can cut the lead to a single possession. UAH got away with a double dribble there, Bryce. Lucky for us, the Blazers stuck with it, stuck with their defensive plan, managed to get a turnover. 15 minutes, 22 seconds remaining in this one. Coach Cuff is over there clapping his hands, wanting his Chargers to play better. Blazers have cut the lead to five. Tony Baker, Baker dribbles back out, now in the baseline, dribbles himself into a little bit of a hole. John Banks fakes the three. Zone offense, no, excuse me, it's a man offense for Alabama Huntsville. Gerard Jones, JJ dribbling around. Now he penetrates, kicks it back out. Tony Baker, John Banks for three. He has it blocked with four seconds on the shot clock. It goes out of bounds. Valdosta State will retain possession. Let's see if they get inside to John. Maybe he can get up a quick hook shot or a quick look. Maybe to hit the rim to get it later in the possession. JJ, he'll shoot the three. It's off the rim, no good. Ivy. David Ivy back in the game for the first time in the second half. Hopwell back to Ivy. Guarded by Gerard Jones. Uses a screen from Easterly. Kicks it back out to Easterly. Now Gardner. Jason Smith. He'll drive the lane, kicks it back out. Ivy with it. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Hopwell, Gardner, seven, six on the shot clock. Back out Hopwell, he'll shoot a three, and he nails it with two big blazers in his face. Hopwell drains the three and puts Alabama Huntsville back up by eight. Did not expect UAH to come out and draining 33 seconds off the clock. I expected them to take a considerable amount of time off the clock, just not dwindle it down to single digits and below five. Gerard Jones finds Tony Biker. He'll try to answer for three. It's off the back iron, no good. Rebound to Hopwell. Wayne Hopwell doing it on both ends of the court in the last couple possessions for Alabama Huntsville. Easterly. Finds Gardner, charge. Good job there by Tony Baker to plant his feet. He took one for the team. If they had called that one a block, Bryce, I don't know what I would have done. Good thing for the Blazers, though, that, like you said, Tony Baker was in perfect position. Settle. Go ahead. 13 and a half minutes remaining. Eight-point lead for Alabama Huntsville here in the complex. The Blazers have not lost at home all season long. Mallet into the game for Gerard Jones. Tony Baker back to Ben Mallet. Mallet back to Tony. Travis Nelson, he'll shoot the three. This one is off the back iron. Rebound to John Banks and he traveled. Travel call by the near side referee. The ball will be taken back by Alabama Huntsville. Hopwell to end that. Thirteen oh six left. Chargers can push the lead to double digits once again. Hasn't been that way 
for a little while here in the second half. Now Hopwell, he's wide open for three. He's a threat. Pulled it back. Ivy. Finds Smith in the far side wing. Smith crossover dribble. Crosses up Ben Mallett, but he kicks it back to Hopwell. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Here's Ivy. Ivy goes up with it. Finds De La Rosa underneath, and that one is off the rim. It was coming back down. Kennedy could have rebounded it. The tip no good. Another tip no good. Another tip rebounded by Popwell. This time, it's going back the Blazers' way. Great persistence there, persistence there by both teams to get that loose ball. UAH had a couple of great opportunities to tip in a ball. Lucky for us, it did not go in. They are so aggressive on the offensive boards. They're so aggressive on the boards, period, Bryce. Banks. Now to Nelson in the far side. Back to Nelson. Blazers staying around the perimeter so far. Pass to Ben Bates, and he wasn't ready for it. Blazers down eight. Coach Yarborough clenching his fist. Smith, now Ray Kennedy. Kennedy on De La Rosa. Foul called, and it trickles home. 11.53 remaining, and now Alabama Huntsville has a chance to go up by 11. Tony Baker telling the refs to call that one both ways. That looked like a touch no, foul as Ray Kennedy barely got a piece of De La Rosa. The refs, the refs seem to be having eyes that just lock in. And when they see something they don't like, they're blowing their whistle. Very much of a fouling game here tonight, Bryce. Kennedy comes out and John Rogers back in. De La Rosa's free throw is good. And Valdosta State now down by 11 points. Ben Mallett bringing it up for Valdosta State. Now John Banks back to Mallett. Tony Baker back to Mallett. John Banks for three in the corner. This one rattles no good. Oh, the Blazers could have used that three from the freshman John Banks, but it decided not to go. No backcourt violation called. Charge not called. Smith goes up, has it blocked by John Rogers. Banks picks it up, and the Blazers are rolling with it once again. Down 11. Banks, he's going to take it to the hole, up with the right hand, fouled on the way. He'll shoot two, but some sloppy play on both ends. Very sloppy. I couldn't tell what was going on half the time. His second. Team foul number four, John Banks. I'm just very surprised that the refs missed a blatant offensive foul call over here and then they're calling any other things they can see. It's just a very inconsistent performance tonight by the referees. 11 minutes, 17 seconds remaining. Banks to the line for two. He had two clutch free throws against Montevallo here at the complex not two weeks ago. First one is good from John Returning Banks. From the Chargers, number 11, Graham Adderholt. See if the Blazers can do a better job of preventing those cut, those cut patterns that UAH likes to likes to do tonight. Haven't been doing a lot of back screens, but they certainly have been shooting those threes. Freshman knocks down the second of two free throws, and it's a nine-point edge back to single digits for Alabama Huntsville. Gardner bringing it up. A little bit of a trap thrown at him by Tony Baker. Now Ivy, double team in the ball. Valdosta State kicks it out to Popwell for three off the front iron. Friendly bounce does not go. Rebound putback doesn't go from Gardner. And now Tony Baker's pressing the issue. Baker, he'll pop, stop, passes it out. Travis Nelson slowing it down. Banks, Mallet, back to John Banks. Tony Baker. Inside pass, good look. Shot off the high glass, no good from Travis Nelson. And with 10 and a half minutes remaining, Blazers still down by nine. This has been a defensive struggle and a shooting struggle for both teams. Gardner inside Ivy, who goes up with a right hand reverse. Lead back to 11. Mallet on the far side, swings it over to Tony Baker. Now, Travis Nelson back to Tony Baker. Baker, they're going to call that a charge. That 
is one of the worst charge calls I've seen. Wayne Popwell's feet were blatantly moving. This has just been very, very upsetting coverage. With 9.58, Blazers down 11, 38, 27, and the crowd taken out of it, possibly because of some of the referees' calls. We'll be back on VSU TV with the rest of the second half. Every day on the set, we get to portray heroes. But the men and women of the Naval Reserve, our real life neighbors, our friends. They're out there every day making a difference. Sometimes even putting themselves in harm's way to keep our nation safe. Making a difference. That's what real heroes do. Find out how you can make a difference by joining the Naval Reserve. Call 1-800-USA-USNR. The United States Naval Reserve. Stay strong. Back on VSU TV, Blazers down 11. Just under 10 minutes to play in this game. Alabama Huntsville has come in here and stopped Valdosta State. They've been unable to shoot the ball. Inbounds pass goes to Graham Adderholt and now swung over to Jamie Gardner. Pick set by Popwell. Adderholt back over to Popwell. Now Ivy. Inside, De La Rosa guarded by John Rogers. John Rogers with some body contact. The reverse, or the fadeaway, no good. Air balled by De La Rosa. And now the Blazers bring it up. Draw Jones back in the game for Valdosta State. We need to get a good push here, Bryce. We need to get some points, and we need to stop them from getting points. Tony Baker, Gerard Jones, Ben Mallett. He fakes the three, dribbles into some space. Now Tony Baker. Baker goes to the rack with the right hand. No foul called. You could hear the slap in the stands. Ben Mallett's three-pointer is off the back iron. No good. Jamie Gardner throws a home run ball to Popwell, who lays it up with the right hand. Good. 13-point lead for Alabama Huntsville. Nearly 30 minutes of basketball. Valdosta State has only been able to muster 27 points. Inside John Rogers, and he misses it. His hand was slapped, he missed it. Rebound put up and in by Tony Baker. And you can see the frustration on the Blazers' faces. They're down 11, but the referees have surely taken them out of this game. The focus is on them and not on stopping Alabama Huntsville. Eight and a half minutes remaining. Now you know, what, you, know, you know what UAH is gonna do now, Bryce? They're gonna melt that clock down for all it's worth. Huntsville moving the ball around as they've done all night long. Adderholm. Wearing the high socks, along with De La Rosa, who's also sporting the high socks. Ivy, quick move, goes to the rack as it knocked away. Tony Baker hits the deck very, very hard as he tried to block that shot. He appears to be okay. He's getting up saying that he's okay. Tony Baker with outstanding hustle, senior leadership right there, trying to spark something, trying to get the Blazers back in this game. Anything, anything that anybody can do now would be greatly appreciated. Popwell for three. It's good. Oh, man. Are they going to count the basket? Once again, here come the referees to converse. It's like they don't even know how the game of basketball is supposed to be called. This is Apparently, there was an offensive foul along with a defensive foul call. No basket. A foul is on... Travis Nelson. Basket will not count with 8.06 remaining, but they do get a new shot clock set back at 35. Ivy to inbound for Alabama Huntsville. Popwell back to Adderholt. Now Gardner. Ivy. Adderholt back to Ivy. He's going to take it to the lane. He has it knocked away. They're going to call another foul. This one, another late foul on Travis Nelson. Fifth team foul. Coach Yarbrough is going absolutely insane on the sideline. And who can blame him? They are not getting any calls. Valdosta State is I'm really. I'm speechless being oh, cheated out of this one. Ivy puts it home. 
Referees have changed the pace of this whole game. It doesn't even seem like a basketball game. The fans, the, the players in the game, the coaches are more concerned about the referees making a good call. Second free throw is missed, rebounded by Nelson. Gerard Jones trying to rally the troops. Down by 12, 7.45 remaining. Yarbrough still upset over there. Inside, John Rogers kicks it back outside. Gerard Jones, stutter step goes to the lane with the right hand good. No whistle on that one. Valdosta State cuts the lead to 10. Let's see if we can get the, let's see if the Blazers can get the crowd involved. The crowd is the sixth man here, Bryce. Everybody knows a big crowd can really help the home team, and now they've started cooking. Adderholt, Popwell. Looking for Ivy, now looking for Anderhold inside on Gerard Jones, he's got a mismatch. De La Rosa leaves it for Ivy. Back to Popwell, he's a three point threat. Popwell to the lane, and he leaves it high off the glass for two. Great play there by Wayne Popwell, who's really come in off the bench and then a factor in this one, 43-31. The Blazers cannot be trading baskets with UAH at this point in time, Bryce. They need to get some stops and get some points to get themselves back in this game. Ben Mallett for three, no good. Rebound John Rogers, he goes up and he is absolutely hacked. Finally a call as John Rogers has been beaten up all night long from underneath the basket. He'll shoot two. Score points when the clock is off. Best way to get back in this ball game. Six minutes, 41 seconds remaining. As you mentioned, Neil, that clock is stopped and the Blazers have a chance to cut this one to a 10 point lead. Rogers' first attempt is sweet as can be. Lead cut to 11. Complex getting very quiet. Second one is no good off the right side of the iron. Chased down by Tony Baker, and that's going to be Blazer ball as it landed off Popwell out of bounds. Valdosta State will take a timeout. Down 11 with 6.39 remaining. We'll be back on Blazer Basketball with the rest of the second half. Stay with us. Valdosta State University, the pathway to success. I love VSU because from the moment I came here, it's just been like a second home. This place was just like home for me, and I love it. I'll always love it. Just above the Florida border, VSU is a second home for students from all over Georgia, 47 states, and 58 countries. A quality university degree, a unique second home, a great location. Valdosta State University, your pathway to success. Back here at the complex in Valdosta, VSU TV with us. And I tell you what, the referees have really changed the complexion of this game. And if they don't get things under control soon and start making good calls, then this place could turn into a zoo. Yeah, and I don't want to see anything compared to an Indiana Detroit type atmosphere. Obviously the players aren't gonna go into the stands, but the stands might come onto the players. Inbounds to John Rogers who puts it up and in. So a three point possession if you count the free throw by John Rogers. And the Blazers now have cut the lead to nine. Gerard Jones guarding Gardner. Jones, good job to get Gardner to give the ball up. And now here's Ivy, six minutes, 20 seconds remaining in this one. Both teams shooting the ball very poorly from the field. Popwell. Now to Gardner. Gardner calling the play. 10 seconds on the shot clock. They're milking that as much as they can. Here's Ivy. He's going to go to the hole. Ivy goes up and lays it in. John Rogers could have swatted that one away, but it would have been goaltending, so smart play there not to. Down 11 now. Valdosta State, under six minutes to go. David Ivy has been a huge part of the UAH scoring threat tonight. JJ looking for his man, it's Tony Baker. Jump, pop, stop, no good, rebound, cannot be gotten. Tony Faker thought that he might be able to get a foul on that one. Five and a half minutes remaining, the Blazers have to be smart with all their possessions now and make a couple stops along the way. De La Rosa to Ivy. John Rogers pops out on him, now goes with him, foul called, blocking foul on Tony Baker. So with 5.24 remaining, that's the sixth team foul. With all the calls they've made, there really haven't been that many total fouls. A lot of these calls have just been bad calls in general. Yeah, you're telling me. That's the second foul for Tony Baker. That was a shooting foul? Apparently Ivy was going to the hoop and he'll take two shots. The first of which is no good. 
as he clanks it off the back iron. That would be classified in basketball terminology as a brick. I want to see a run like we had against Montevallo. To close this game out, we're down 11. Same amount of time left on the clock, five minutes to go. If we can pull this off, it'd be another huge victory for the Blazers. Ivy's second free throw rolls in. Back to a 12-point lead for Alabama Huntsville. Gerard Jones lets the ball bounce all the way down court. That way, the clock doesn't start until he picks it up. Tony Baker looking inside for Ger John Rogers. Gerard R Jones now outside Travis Nelson. Nelson for three, and it's good. Travis Nelson in the face of danger knocks down a three fearlessly, and with five minutes remaining, the Blazers cut the lead to nine again. He's been the most constant player tonight. He had 22 against UAH up in Huntsville. Let's see if they get him more active now as the game is dwindling down to a close. Without Michael Crane, he is the most viable three-point threat on the court for Valdosta State. Jason Smith inside. Popwell fouled by Ben Mallett. He'll go to the line for two. Seventh team foul for Valdosta State, which that means for the rest of the way, Alabama Huntsville will be in the double bonus. Fellas, number 22, Ben Mallett, his second. Team That's not necessarily a good thing because overall, UAH is shooting near to 75% from the free throw line tonight. First shot on the way from Popwell is good. Stretching it to a 10 point lead for Alabama Huntsville. Second free throw is also good. Back to 11. Gerard Jones to bring it across the timeline for Valdosta State. Mallet. Tony Baker for three. He squares up and it just doesn't go, but Travis Nelson, great position underneath, puts the put back home. Lead back to nine for Alabama Hunts. That's what we need. We need to get more active on the boards. We need to stop them. We need to maybe cause a turnover here against UAH. Up and in, David Ivey. Wow. Goes straight to the hoop from the baseline. This is one aggressive Alabama Huntsville team, truly not afraid of John Rogers because they take him out of the play. Rogers goes up and good. 30 second timeout called by Valdosta State with four minutes remaining. Blazers up or down nine, 50 to 41. Tune in to cable channel 11 for News 11 in focus Thursdays at three, that's live, and 10 p.m for the latest national, state, and local news. That's News 11 on BSU-TV. Bryce in, their, in the UAH VSU game up in Huntsville a couple of weeks earlier, David Ivey had no points. He had no points in that game in Huntsville. That's probably the reason why David Ivey is getting so many good looks and so many points tonight is because that the Blazers have been keying in on Jamie Gardner and Jason Smith, uh, excuse me, Daniel Easterly. So maybe they need to start playing better defense, better overall defense tonight. With four minutes left, we need to have that better defense starting now. Gardner passing it in now to Jason Smith. Easterly, double team, back out, Popwell. Foul called on Travis Nelson. That's a one-on-one -on -one situation now. As David Ivey goes to the line. His fourth. Team foul number eight. David Ivey took the line for the Chargers. First one and one. First one is good from Ivey. So with 3.45 remaining, he stretches it back to a 10-point lead. Ivey's second attempt is no good. Tipped, rebound tipped again, and Ben Mallett finally comes away. Mallett, now to Tony Baker. Baker back to Mallett. Ben Mallett does not use the screen from John Rogers. Nelson, cutting, Gerard Jones finds an open lane, he lays it up with the left hand and good. Lead back to eight points for Alabama Huntsville. Blazers need to get a turnover here, Bryce. With 3.15 to go, they cannot allow UAAs to run that clock down. It's gonna to be too little too late. Play getting very chippy in the final three minutes. Blazers down eight. 
Easterly. To Popwell. They're gonna milk this clock as you mentioned earlier, Neil. And it's knocked away and taken away, Gerard Jones. Jones, great pass, but that is knocked away by Ivy. Foul called Tony Baker as he fouls Jamie Gardner. It'll be a one and one situation. Not a very good decision there by Tony Baker. He tried to thread the needle between two Charger players to get the ball to Travis Nelson. Obviously, he didn't have the results that he had wanted. Timeout called by Alabama Huntsville. With two minutes and 50 seconds, that's a full timeout. We'll take a break too. 51-43, Blazers down by eight. Back here on VSU TV, Alabama Huntsville on top of Valdosta State, 51-43. The Blazers, top spot in the Gulf South Conference is under jeopardy as Jamie Gardner will go to the line for the Chargers. Gardner, their top scorer, but his touch has been a little bit off already this season. Two minutes, 50 seconds remaining. Jamie Gardner's free throw is no good. No, it fell in. Just the type of luck the Blazers needed, but we needed it to roll the other way. Second attempt for Gardner. It is also good. And back to a 10-point lead for Alabama Huntsville. Bringing the ball up, John Banks. Banks finding Ben Mallett. Mallett now to Gerard Jones in the corner. Blazers have got to score and score fairly quickly as it's stolen away. Mallett's pass taken away. Jamie Gardner is going to take it to the rack, and it's blocked. It looked like a clean block from Ben Mallett, but there must have been some body contact because these referees have never made a bad call. Of course, they've never made a bad call tonight, Rice. I'm not so sure that that one wasn't some body contact, but with two minutes and 32 seconds left to go, you might want to leave that one be. Little Ben Ballant getting up, raising to block that shot of Jamie Gardner, who's 6'5", and he'll go to the line. Gardner's free throw is good. Now an 11-point Alabama Huntsville lead. This might be a little bit too much for the Blazers to overcome in two and a half minutes, Bryce, but anything is possible. But the Blazers are going to have to pull something out of their magical hat if they want to get a W in the win column tonight. Gardner's second attempt. It is no good. Rebounded by John Rogers. So lead stuck at 11. Two and a half minutes left to go. John Banks finds Mallet Back to Banks. Blazers need to be pushed it. They can't be afforded to waste time like this, Bryce. Jason Smith. The Blazers do not need a three, but they do need a points. Mallet goes up with it. No foul called. Rebound slam from Travis Nelson as he finished up, cleaned up the trash. Two minutes remaining. Blazers down nine. John Banks on Jason Smith. Smith. Has just three more seconds at a half line. He does. He finds Ivy. They'll move it back out. Foul called. Smith will go to the line as Ben Mallett intentionally fouled him with 153 remaining. The decision fell by Ben Mallett, ben Bryce. Mallett, Obviously, the Blazers need to stop the clock and hope that UAH can somehow decrease their free throw shooting percentage here. Free throw is good from Jason Smith. Pushing the lead to 10. One minute, 53 seconds left. Second free throw is also good. 56, 45. Blazers down 11 here. Ben Mallett's gonna let it roll once again. Now he picks it up. Guarded by David Ivey. Banks pulls up with a jump shot off the glass, no good. Rebound John Rogers, fouled. He'll go to the line and shoot two, and once again, a chance to score some points without that clock ticking away. Yeah, exactly what the Blazers need. 
they needed it a couple minutes ago. Let's hope the Blazers can mount an incredible rally here and at least get this game back to single digits. Rodgers to the line for the first of two. Count it. Put it on the board. It's now a 10-point lead for Alabama Huntsville. Rodgers' second try is also good. And it's now nine points. Tried to quick inbounds it. Ben Bates on the inbounds pass. Jamie Gardner with it. Gardner bringing it up court. John Banks guarding him. Passes over to Jason Smith. Smith, minute 33 remaining in this one. Yarbrough's saying no foul. You no foul. They don't want to foul. They want to take their chance and hope that Alabama Huntsville misses this shot opportunity, this possession, and the Blazers can cut it to a three possession or two possession lead. It's up and no good. Rebound, John Rogers. Travis Nelson bringing it up across. Nelson with a minute 11 left. Travis Nelson, the Blazers have got to move fairly quick. Now John Banks. Banks is going to drive. He's going to pull up and throw it to Ben Bates, who goes up with the right hand and it's foul. So Bates will get a chance to shoot two. Let's hope that the junior from Berryville, Virginia, comes in through the clutch here to get this within seven points here. As we see some fans very distraught about the score so far. First shot is good from Ben Bates. One minute, one second. Lead cut to eight. Into the game, Ray Kennedy and Tony Baker, John Rogers and Travis Nelson come out. Some strategizing here being done by Coach Yarbrough, getting some shooters onto the field, onto the court. Second free throw is also good. Rangers have got to foul now, Bryce. They've got to go for turnover first and then foul. Lead cut to seven. This one's dribbled. Now Smith, now they've got to try to foul him. They can't foul. Popwell with it. Popwell, now Gardner, inside to Easterly, and he puts it in. Blazers don't foul. They were too busy concentrating on fouling. They missed Easterly completely. So now the score is 58. Tony Baker for three. Off the rim, no good. And with 38 seconds and four tenths, Jason Smith is fouled by John Banks. Blazers now put Alabama Huntsville in the double bonus. Down by nine points right now. It could be very, very tough for Valdosta State to escape this one with a W. It looks, you have, to, you have to credit UAH. They came in here and they established a tempo right off the bat. They established their tempo. Controlling the clock, taking wise precision shots, cutting through the lane. As you see here, Wayne Popple at the line made the first shot. Don't forget to come to Mellon Mushroom every Tuesday at 6 p.m. in Remerton for the Jim Yarbrough Show. Feel the excitement of Blazer Hoops as brought to you by Coach Yarbrough. It's pizza, it's fun, it's the Jim Yarbrough Show. Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. at the Mellow Mushroom. A lot of distraught cheerleaders I just saw, Bryce. Very disappointing effort tonight. I wouldn't say that. I would say very disappointing effort from the men in the white and black stripes. But unfortunately, we're playing UAH and not the refs. You can't blame a whole game on the referees, even though they've, oh, long range shot there by John Banks. Cuts the lead eight with 32.8. At least but a 30 foot shot there, guys. The referees are most definitely not the reason why Valdosta State lost. They sure as heck did contribute. Blazers haven't lost yet with 24 seconds. Anything can happen, foul called on Valdosta State. Ben Mallett, that's his fifth. He'll be gone as he'll sit out for the rest of this one. But Valdosta State, you can't blame a whole game on the referees. No, you can't. Though they do impact it and they influence it, they do not dictate the outcome of the game. VSU just did not do a very good job of shot selection tonight, Bryce, and you have to credit that to the aggressive UAH defense. I did, honestly, I did not expect UAH to come out and play a mixture of this man and zone that we saw tonight. But obviously, what works, you have to stick with it. Hope stay alive for Blazer fans as Smith misses the first one off the front iron. John Thompson has entered the game, number 32 for Valdosta State, along with Jeremy Mallory, number 42, as they get a little look at home. Minda Gasparuta, number 55, in the game as well. 
John Banks bringing it up, 20 seconds on the clock. Blazers have all but conceded victory. John Banks from way downtown. Mallory decides not to go after that one. And with 15.5, I think that Coach Yarbrough in Valdosta State may just let this one dribble out. Jason Smith bringing the ball up for Alabama Huntsville, and they have come to the complex and beaten the number one team, or at least tied for the number one team here in the Gulf South Conference. John Banks slapping the ball around. Coach Hill has got to be a little bit disappointed. The first home loss of the season, especially in conference play. Blazers move to six and two. Now Alabama Huntsville moves to four and four and into striking distance because Montevallo and West Georgia play tonight. And the result of that game could shake things up a little bit here in the Gulf South. It could shake things up a lot because the Blazers, remember, have to go on the road to Carrollton to play West Georgia, and then to Montevallo. Well, thanks for everybody that watched. Neil Folger alongside Bryce Zimmerman. I want to thank Mindy Copeland for doing the women's game with us. That's it from the complex. Blazers lose this one 61-52. We'll see you next time on VSU-TV.